Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. We have a minute tonight, or? Uh, yep. Okay. I don't know if you guys got a chance to. These are just to review the finance committee joint meeting minutes. Is that? These are ones that Phil had okay. taken care of. Okay, we have a, a number of things on our agenda for this evening, and the first order that we have is we have a, uh, a hearing related to a uh, dangerous dog. We have quite an extensive report also from uh, Laura Pease, our regional animal control officer, and I guess I can start off with you if you could fill us in a little bit on the background of what's transpired so far. And Do you want me to just read this? You can read it, or if you want to just paraphrase, that's okay too, okay. however you want to handle it. Um, on March 18th, um, a dog from 582 Warwick Road, um, under the care of um, Madison Cove, got loose off her property, went to the neighbor's um, at 258 while in it. Um, the two of them got into, the two dogs got into a very major dispute. Um, the dog that was protecting her own property got herself really badly chewed up. Um, and both owners got themselves bit in the process of separating the dogs. This is not the first time that um, Tater, the dog from um, 582 was loose. It was loose in let's see, September 19th of 2016, um, and was picked up on South um, is it South Street or South Road? South Street is South it? Street. South Street. Um, at which point, because it didn't have collars or IDs on it, um, I did hold the dogs um, until the owner could be located. Um, I have some recommendations on what I think would keep this from happening again. The first thing you're going to have to decide as um, a board is whether the dog, you know, whether this is something that is worth coming in front of the selectman, you know, because you can dismiss it, you can decide that the dog is a dangerous dog, or you can decide the dog is a nuisance dog. Okay. Now, just to uh, make sure I, I understand it, if procedurally, at least the way it used to be, when a person would bit by a dog, if they would, if they had to go for health care, the place, the health care place has to notify the board of health, and then to the, the town, dog. and then it eventually gets here. Yeah, both dogs were put on the ten-day quarantine that was required. And okay. They showed up with babies. Okay. And we didn't expect either dog to Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood the yeah. procedure. So that's what yeah. brings it... Yeah, no. What brings it here is okay. the request of one of the parties to have a hearing. Okay. 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 Board members, do you have any questions or... Can I just say one thing to uh, look, look, to I'll, Yeah, everybody will get a chance, okay? okay. I just want to make sure the board ready and then we can you know discuss this and somehow come to a what I hope is an amicable solution okay so everybody will get a chance I don't know if you gentlemen or 
fill your head in. Yeah. And what's, the, what's the di distinction between a nuisance and a dangerous dog? Um, basically, a nuisance dog is a dog that has, has caused a problem, but at this point, you're not considering so dangerous that we have to put a whole bunch of um, things on it. There's the state, I, I don't have my state rigs in front of me, but it's broken down with the state. Nuisance is, is a problem that it gives you more freedom as to what you decide to do with the animal. If it goes dangerous, then there's pretty much a cookie cutter from the state as to what should be done. I have the okay. Oh, you do, good. Okay. So there's definitions in your legs. Okay, yeah. that, that would be nice to know the difference between the nuisance and the dangerous as the state views it. Uh, dangerous is defined <coughs> as a dog that either, one, without justification, attacks a person or domestic animal, causing physical injury or death, or two, behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of physical injury or death to a person or to a domestic or owned animal. That's a dangerous dog. In a, um, a nuisance dog, the definition is a little longer, it has three parts. Um, one, a nuisance dog that, one, by excessive barking or other disturbance, is a source of annoyance to a sick person residing in the vicinity. Or two, by excessive barking causing damage or other interference, a reasonable person will find such behavior disruptive to one's quiet and peaceful enjoyment. Or three, has threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal, or a person, but such threat or attack was not a grossly disproportionate reaction under all the circumstances. And I asked for him because I wanted, I asked that Tater be declared a nuisance dog. I didn't want him to be in danger of being put down. I think that his response, having been first, our dog was the initial aggressor, um, and that his response, I don't think was initially grossly disproportionate, he was defending himself. Then, their instincts took over, and okay. you know, it, it just snowballed from there. Okay. And so, it was just an unfortunate situation. I, mean, I don't, I don't want Tater to be found a dangerous dog. I just would like him not to be able to do that again. Okay. The um, it, it it seems to me. See if I want to make sure I'm understanding it right. The dog was down to your garage. You're trying to remove him, and he wasn't a hostile towards you initially. He was being agreeable take him away, but when your dog came out, obviously protecting this territory, not an unreasonable response from my dog, um, and uh, began an attack, then he defended himself. Yes. Um, certainly seen that happen with dogs. It's, it's not, as I understand, even in um, kennel clubs, if dogs show in a show any, any you know, aggression towards handlers, they're out. But aggression towards other dogs is expected from, from animals. So that, that doesn't surprise me. Um, I think a dog is being a dog in this case, and a dog that's allowed to wander is going to go wander. And I um, hate to see the dog punished for that. Um, I was a little bit right. alarmed to find him in my garage. Right, right. Um, that and that's. Tater. And no, that wasn't Tater. Okay, well, just speak, please speak through the chair. Okay. Uh, Everybody it's going you. going as, as far as what, what I'm seeing here so far. It, it, it's well written. It, I seem to, what it says lets you comment behind it pretty well. Um, you know, a, a dog being loose, obviously we have a leash law. Um, I've had a Jack Russell. I wouldn't let him go anywhere. That little rut would go after anything. He just, he just thought he was a big, and he'd get himself killed doing it. He's just, um, he's gone now, but he, you know, because of that, I was very careful to keep him in. Didn't mean he didn't get out once in a while. The door opened and he got an opening, out he'd go, and, and then the chase was on. Um, so it, it, it's, it, it's difficult. He's not a dog that did damage people, luckily. Um, 
but if he had, I'd feel responsible for that damage, and certainly medical bills and vet bills, I think would be, um, you know, certainly the responsibility of, of the dog that was not kept on its property. That, that would be my take on it. What I can tell you is that in previous times, we have dealt with that as a civil matter. Um, I don't that, think the way that, that, is. that the, the law is written that you as a board can, can make that decision. So I'm just putting that right. out. Right. I, I, I understand that. I, I did have a Rottweiler years ago when I lived in, in the city of Haverhill. I had a neighbor's dog and my dog sniffing through the fence and it, it bit my dog in the nose. And the Rottweiler proceeded to snap a one inch steel cable, pile through a stockade fence, and got to the other dog about three seconds before I got to her. And she caused about $400 in vet bills and 120 punctures in the dog in seconds. Um, thought I had her adequately restrained. I thought with a spiked choker collar and an eighth inch cable, she wasn't going anywhere. Lovable dog, friendliest thing in the world, but had no patience for any other dog that attacked it. Um, and she was a dog, but still, I had, they made no hesitation to pay those bills. That was clearly, my dog did it. I didn't, not for lack of attempt, but I was unable to, to restrain her. But civil matter, uh, was my dog a nuisance? No, she was attacked. Was she dangerous? Certainly not to any people or anything that didn't attack her. Um, and, and I would have been greatly disappointed if someone said my dog was dangerous because of the breed, which is what this sounds like to me, which is what I'm worried about. What I hear, my opinion so far, is it sounds civil unless there's some other law that's presented to me that shows otherwise that it, it probably doesn't belong in front of us. But well, that's my opinion. The, the, the pain does not belong in front of us. So, yeah, okay. Okay. Right. And, and okay. I, I, don't, I don't hear anything um, that says the dog itself is being a nuisance other than it got out. Now, I don't know unless we hear that this dog is getting out on a regular basis or we have several complaints about the dog being off the property, multiple complaints. But um, like but I said, I, I I've had any pets get out. Even my cat will get out when I don't want the darn thing out. Animals do this. Um, and, and it's not necessarily being a nuisance, but being an animal. Um, well, repeated behavior <clears throat> would concern me greatly. I, I can um, tell you that we picked it up one other time. I can also tell you that I have had a couple of other calls that I've responded to on the um, South Street area that fit the description of this dog, but I didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And that's not that unusual, so I can't say whether it, were, it was these two, you know, the two dogs, Tater and, and its buddy, or not, because I didn't find them. Um, I did pick them up once, I would say, a good mile from the house. Mm -hmm. And the way the definition of, harm, of nuisance dog reads, where it says that the threat or attack was not a grossly disproportionate reaction is distinguishing nuisance dog from dangerous dog. In other words, a dangerous dog would have exhibited a grossly disproportionate reaction. So the fact that the reaction was not grossly disproportionate doesn't mean that it wasn't a nuisance dog. It just means it, the definition says has threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal or a person, but the attack was not grossly disproportionate. It's still the definition of a nuisance dog. Okay. Now you, right. you wish to speak. I, 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 I understand those definitions um, very clearly. And, um, you know, I've, I grew up in a small town similar to this, and we had troubles in our towns with dogs that packed together and chased deer, chased people, um, chased other animals, and that was that was a dangerous and a nuisance behavior. Um, people were repeatedly warned to, to keep the animals from, from running free because they were doing this. They didn't. The animals were all put down. Um, animals that attack people's livestock, be it chickens, sheep, horses, cows, um, you know, the, the habit or pattern of being aggressive towards them. I've had animals around horses that are fine with horses. I've had other animals that nip at horses, and normally the horses will take care of that pretty quickly themselves. Um, but I, it, once again, because what I'm only here is one confirmed um, event that the dog wasn't over there looking for trouble or being aggressive to you or hunting out your dog, it was attacked. I just, I don't see a reason for the board to act on it, but that's my opinion, and I will, I'll listen now to what they think on it. Okay, now you wish. Um, I 
I feel personally. Um, are you are you the owner? I'm his keeper. Okay, keeper. So okay. I had two dogs um, when I lived at my mom's house, which was at 582 Walnut Road. Taz has been readopted through the Western Animal Rescue League, so mm-hmm. he was a foster of mine. And then his Tater's owner is seeking treatment in Falmouth right now, so that's why I'm taking care of him. Um, we have since me and Tater moved to the Brain Tree. Um, I don't even live there anymore. And there's one dog left in that house, which is a little Yorkshire Terrier. Um, I know that the owner of the dog has contacted them in good faith, trying to. He didn't have a job when he was down there. Now he does. He wants to make payments, take care of whatever vet bills that they had to pay for out of pocket. Um, and I would assume medical. If they were injured or or had. Yeah, I think they sent us a letter that there was like a total of like $1,700 in bills. Mm -hmm. And the owner's aware and he wants to make, you know, payments towards that because that wouldn't Mm -hmm. be fair for them to pay that out of pocket at all, as would be expected if I took my dog to the vet and there was money to be paid either. But um, as far as them feeling unsafe, we don't live there anymore. So. Where is the dog located now? What property? He is in, uh, we're on West Road in New Braintree. What is the address? 875 West Road. Still her jurisdiction, so. Oh, it is, it is yes. now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure she that. got pulled into the, it's so okay. So she'll keep track of it, I'm sure. <laughs> the, um. But he's not, he's not even a wanderer. Like, I, I was going looking, you were looking for my other dog, and he, like, he, doesn't leave the yard ever. It's because I left the yard, then he left the yard. And like in a pack, when like Taz, like when they got out in September, they were on their lines outside. Taz pulled his collar. They were pack animals and they were pretty bonded. You know, went with him. Um, but there's no longer Taz. He's been readopted. He has a home. He was, you know, not relevant. Okay. So. What was what, what was the request before the board to make a just to make a declaration of a nuisance on this dog or because what what's the request before the board on this? My request was for you to find the dog a nuisance dog, although I think if it's the definition, arguably of a dangerous dog, uh, in order for you to be able to make orders, the orders that Officer Pease is requesting. I'm not asking, you know, I did ask for you to order the payment, but I understand that that's not something that you have authority to do, um, payment of the vet bills. Um, and it's true that the owner did call me and offer to pay the vet bills, so I'm not bringing that matter before the board. Um, so I am asking you to find the dog a nuisance because if you don't do that, you can't make orders. and. Uh, Officer Pease won't have the party to um, mm-hmm. follow up. We can't make I orders for New Brain Tree, though. If the dog's not here anyways, we couldn't even make orders for New Brain Tree. No, but we can make orders if the dog can. returns to Barry. Look at the um, regulations. We, we could. Um, I'd like to show you photographs of the injuries to our dog. It's my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, I am I'm aware of what the injuries Christmas. can be very quickly. Yeah, they they um they can cause damage no, as I know mine did. Okay, thank you. So she was um that's her ear. Mm-hmm. Right, which had to be amputated. This is her that the back of her neck stitches there, and this is her belly. Okay. My husband's arm. And yeah, you have one of his hands. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Okay. What type of dog do you have? Ours is a pickle mix. Okay. It's, um, it's actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking more for size is the question, oh. not temperament, because I'm not a fan pounds. of 50 She's pounds. She's a little bit smaller than Tater. Okay. Um, and Tater is? About 50 pounds. 
Yeah. One's a little, like a little taller. Is that really the difference of same muscular? Yeah, because he's a little more muscular. Okay. Okay. So what are you recommending that, Laura, that we do? Just, what would you, other than this, but the dog's not at this location any longer. It, it's, it's a tough call because this yes, was the first time yeah. that uh, you know, we had interacted with other dogs at the South the um, Street address with no issue. Thank so you. it may have been responding more to the fact that there was, you know, the initial um, of, of their dog protecting their property. The thing is it did ramp up quite quickly to quite a bit of damage. Which is the nature oh. of any two similar, especially that type of breed. Especially the... Okay, we'll let her, and then I, I, I want to um, make sure everybody... Okay, um... Too powerful working dogs, that's for sure. I would like to see it kept on a leash at all times. I'd like to see it not be loose at all. Um, I think on a leash it could be managed. Um, I think that if it's going to be tied out, it needs to be tied out on with a... A, a, a martingale collar so it can't slip it and that um, it be tied out on a reason a, you know at least reasonable that it will not break it um, you know this is a tough one because normally we come in front of you after more than one incident and this is the first incident but it was a significant incident um, and with the fact that at the time they were neighbors I had written something that would keep the dog from getting loose in the neighborhood. Um, I cannot ban it from town, according to the um, Mass General laws. If it doesn't come to town, then the two dogs are not going to interact. But you can't say it can't come to town. Um, you know, I think as a, if I were the dog owner or keeper, I probably wouldn't bring it to visit at mom's because there's you know there's history there now. Um, but I think if it was kept on a leash all the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wrote in the muzzle because being that they were next door neighbors, I could see it slipping away and going right back up there. Um, you know, being in New Braintree, we've had no problems with it in New Braintree, um, you know, because I've been called if there was an issue and I haven't been. So it sounds like. You know, I, I do believe that most likely it was the fact that the two of them lived closely enough together that even though they had not met, they were very aware of each other. Mm -hmm. So when they got together, it escalated very quickly. Okay. Okay, now you wish... I don't really know. Okay. Okay. Matt? Um, just reading up on it, I read the original letter you sent. I read your follow-up recommendation. I've seen the letters. I've heard your story. Um, I do believe, in a way, this is just the worst confluence of things all happening at the same time to get to to escalate to the level it did. I don't think it would be something that I would almost. This is me. Just again. You can only guess so much because the assumptions are something you just don't know. But had it been a day where you were home and your dog wasn't out, couldn't get outside for some reason, you probably would have found a way for your neighbor to come get the dog and it goes away and it just never happened. It never becomes what it is. No. Um, if this same event occurred in their yard, all of a sudden your dog is a dangerous dog because it attacked versus defended itself. Mm -hmm. Even though it's taking on a defense of my territory mentality. So I don't want to, it's not a human, so I'm not saying it has this objective it ability to review life problem. and all these yeah. comp. So what I'm really trying to get at here is it seems like beyond just a dogs in your yard type nuisance, it's a one time event. I don't disagree with it's still a significant event. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the full enclosure. I do agree though, if for some reason the dog comes back to Barry, it needs to be completely restrained with the six foot leash. I'm hesitant to require the muzzle, 
but I would warn you, if you come back with a six foot leash and it ever gets off and does this again, mm -hmm. it will go well beyond an enclosure because that would mean that there's one, there's a history and the owner's aware of the history and the owner didn't take the steps or the caretaker did not take the steps to prevent a reoccurrence. Right. And if that's the case, I'm not blaming the dog, I'm blaming you or whoever technically we blame through the state law because it may be the owner we're blaming and it's he's going to blame you, I don't know. So my recommendation would limit it down to the, if it's ever back in this town, it doesn't leave your yard without a leash. And I would highly recommend you never let it out of the front door without a leash. Just for the potential, it might think it's nice to say hi to your neighbor and then your neighbor's dog says it's not nice to say hi to my owner because that's all it takes is a truly canine misunderstanding to send this, put this dog on a list it doesn't belong on. Because I really don't think it belongs on a dangerous, like you were even implying. Mm -hmm. But we do need to do something to control the dog's potential for a repeat occurrence. I'm not sitting here saying that I don't know how she would enforce it. Like if she saw you walking and it didn't have a leash on, does that mean she now comes after you? Or is it, it should have been, maybe she plays her verbal warnings long enough depending on, but if it ever gets away from you again and causes it, this goes right to the top of the list of dangerous animal. Do we not have a And it'd be one? your fault. So just yeah. keep that in mind. It would, no, I understand. Okay. Do okay. And that's really all I would recommend is. Which means that a leash law means that if it's off your property, it has to be on a leash. So we're in violation of the leaf law, leash law in the first place. So that's to reiterate what Matt's saying. Um, it, it's already violated the leash law, um, perhaps because it didn't normally, well, it, it got out off of one, but, you know, obviously it, it needs further steps to, to keep it restrained. If it's, if it's gone off the property without a leash twice, attention needs to be paid to that before it happens again. Serious attention. Um, because this is what can happen. Um, my experience, once again, with my large dog, Rottweiler, every dog that saw her wanted to attack her. She's the friendliest dog in the world. I was around my infant children, nothing but love, but would not tolerate aggression from another dog. And she had the strength and power to see her side of it through. Didn't stop other dogs from turning because they were scared or whatever the, the reason was, dogs would attack her. And if she wasn't on the leash, which I always kept her on the leash, um, I'm sure she would have killed several dogs. Not because she's a vicious killer looking for it, but when things attack these strong dogs, as you own the same type, you know, if a little Yorkie attacked your dog, she would put it down in an instant. <laughs> there would be no hesitation. Um, and, you know, to try to think about this, on the, we're all dog lovers here, right? We all have dogs. We like our dogs. We care a lot about our dogs. They're part of our family. Um, so I, I'm strongly against making ruling against it. But as Matt said, we look to the owners and the handlers. This is your responsibility. When I see a dog struck and killed by a car, I'm, I'm so upset that people that, that, that own that dog, if it get out, it's one thing. But when people habitually let their dogs run, it's like they don't care. They don't care that it's in the street. They don't care if it gets killed. And that's, that bothers me greatly. And, and there is something that can be done about that. OK. I've got one last question. Yeah, Matt. Um, regarding registration of the dog, um, I mean, technically, it falls on the owner, but eventually, it's going to be an issue. You need to resolve that with the owner and have that dog registered. I'm not going to say what town you have to have that registered in. Registered in the town of Barry. He's not. I talked to the, uh, the town clerk, said it is not licensed for this year in the town of Barry. We registered him in September because we needed the registration to get him back. Okay, that's that the, was it, last year. In, so, yeah. so not right. in a one year period like no, we went to that was of the different. April. April. Okay. You have exactly. What they gave you was a license for four months or so and then you've got to re up they run in April. April, and, April. So you missed a deadline. We'll leave it at that. So right. June first? 
Mm-hmm. They begin April. The deadline is before um, June first. Yes. The deadline's June but they they June, start yeah. in yeah. the end of April. That's but, fine, but there's, no, but there's the penalties no start yeah. in June. <laughs> they so want the trail you trail in April. Registrations of the plate. I don't care if you register in November. You got to do it again in January. Yeah. Okay. Expire okay. in December. All I'm asking, whether it's Barry or it ends up being New Braintree now, yeah. it would be. I would request that you get it registered in the next month. Absolutely. And then you show Laura the registration so she knows that it's been done. Because she now is also the animal control officer of New Braintree. So if it's either New Braintree or Barry, have it done and then just give her the heads up. I did it. I am trying to act and follow and and that'll go a long way. Absolutely. So okay. can you just reiterate once so. more what your recommendation? Okay, what what I'm hearing, my, my recommendation is that it be on a leash whenever it's in town. Mm -hmm. Uh, But in order to do that, you're going to have to deem it a nuisance dog to put an order on it. Okay. If you choose not to put an order on it, we still have a leash law in town. And then I enforce the leash law if a dog is loose. But um, I can't force someone to put a dog on a leash on their own property or their mother's property if they have permission to use their mother's property. The problem with it being loose on mother's property is the next door neighbor is right up the hill. You can see the house. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the the width of the diagonal of this um, building be, between the two properties. So, in a minute, there could be you know you could have another problem. So. Do you have an issue with that? No. Thank you. I was I, just. I, I, would rather just the leash law be enforced when he's in the town of Barry, which he hasn't been, which is not relevant. I mean, my mom lives there. But I need to say that he's a nuisance dog isn't necessarily fair, especially if this is the first incident, that this is the first instance this has ever happened, or, and it's never happened since. I'd feel How does that carry from town to town under state law? Um, State law, once it's deemed something, it's deemed in all of Massachusetts. So a nuisance dog is a nuisance dog, which yeah. means it now can be a dangerous dog based on history, um, depending on how another town... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it, it does carry with it. Okay, so it's a nu- if we said it's a nuisance dog, it it's, it's a nuisance, nuisance, nuisance dog in, in another community, yeah. and if they said that it, would, it came back, it would be a nu- still yeah. a nuisance dog. Okay. But this whole file would be part of that claim. Yes. So if another town recognized a similar instance, or another instance, but it came before them, they can bring a whole history they together and then it was deemed create a, a pattern Mary, issue. And okay. now we're seeing the same behavior here. And so we're, we're choosing to up the ante, absolutely they could. Even if he goes to another jurisdiction entirely? Yeah, uh, anywhere in Massachusetts, um, the law carries. Mm-hmm. But they would be aware of it if, if it went to the Boston area. If it went to the Boston area, they would have to contact us and say, have you had any issue? And we'd say, yes, we have a nuisance order oh, on yeah. this dog. Mm-hmm. And they would, um, you know, if there was another issue, they might choose to take the previous history and carry it forward. Let me ask one question, it's hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Could you say with any confidence that if that dog were walked on a leash past your property and your dog was outside, that it would not go attack it again? Oh, no, I couldn't say that Okay, all. if that dog were leashed and muzzled, it wouldn't stand a chance. Your dog's also not restrained just because this didn't trip over the property line doesn't mean it would have been any different had this dog got halfway back to its front door. I'm strongly against labeling this dog because of one incident. I understand it was a horrible incident and I understand it's very unfortunate the way it happened. Dogs will be dogs and owners of dogs um, need to be very careful. I don't let mine out without a leash. They've gotten off. I've always had a run. They always go on it. Um, you know. If okay. you did choose nuisance, you do not have to go with all of my recommendations. But it carries with the dog state-wise, and someone else Mm -hmm. may take a a harsher stance on that, I think, unreasonably so for the animal. Don't forget, also, Greg, if we did do nuisance, you also have the right to write in your own opinion to put into the file as to why it was deemed nuisance and why you chose only a leash or only... You can write in your opinion into the file so it's not just 
it happened. What I'm hearing, though, I'm just stating. So a bigger story can be put into the history. Had this had you this gotten back across the property line, I don't think the results would be any different, except it would have been off its property. And the, you know what I mean? It, it's bad circumstance. And um, had it had it gone across the property line, then someone could say that your dog attacked their dog off the property, and that was a hostile mm -hmm. act after another dog. And then it's then it's borderline on dangerous. And you certainly want wouldn't want your dog labeled dangerous because it happened on the other side of the property line. You know, um, even on my own property, you have the right on your property to let your dog off without a leash. Mm -hmm. I don't do it a month because of this. I've seen these things. I learned my lesson on my big dog years ago, and she was even restrained. Um, my my stockade went to chain link after that, so she couldn't do that again. Um, but I, I look at the owners of the dogs to, you know, be careful with, with their pets. and. Um, the animals don't know where the property line is. This dog wasn't the aggressor. Um, had this been on the other side of the property line, this would not have changed except for we'll be looking at dangerous on your dog, which wouldn't be fun. And if they do walk that dog down the street, which they do have every right to do on a leash, mm -hmm. and heaven forbid it's muzzled, and your dog saw it, it we could have a dead dog. For, and then we'd have two dead dogs because yours would be dangerous. It would have killed another animal off its property. And, and the repercussions would be pretty severe. I, I don't want to go down that path. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, see if we can bring this uh, to a head. Do I have a, a motion? To I have a motion to dismiss. Hmm? I have a motion to take no action on this. Okay. Do I have a, a second to that? Do I have another different motion, I guess? Not for me. Okay, yeah, I kind of figured that. <laughs> Here's where I'm really at on this, okay. just so people understand, because I think that the difficulty in this is as much the law as it is the difference between owner and animal. The label gets applied to the animal. Um, then we have various histories of how people raise their animals, how they live with them, and how they choose to allow them their certain freedoms. And that's a, it's a fine line on your own property how you do that. And it's very difficult for someone to say you should or shouldn't do it a different way. Um, to label it a nuisance means we can then tell her what she should be able to do with her dog on her own property. which is very hard for me because it's very not in my nature to want to be able to tell somebody what to do on their own property. I'm just giving you where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And also, I really don't think this dog deserves the history that may come with another incident that may be very minor again where it just happens to have a similar situation where it's another dog that came at it and maybe what it is is neutral ground. Mm -hmm. Two dogs are out in public somewhere on somebody else's farmland. They see each other, they fight. Her dog wins or is equally hurt, but it doesn't matter. But now somebody says, that dog did this in another town. Now all of a sudden this dog has got something that's grown into something bigger than what it is. And it's more because of the free run. So I don't know how more strongly I could say this, but it's the free run that's going to put this dog in jeopardy more than the dog's personality. I have to take full responsibility. I understand. And because of that, is the only reason I'm even contemplating the possibility of supporting some type of nuisance label. And I know that sounds odd, but it's because it's the only way I can put it on you to understand the, the level of concern, surprisingly, that actually everybody in this room has for your dog. That's why we're here, is everybody has a concern for your dog and they don't want it worse. Can I? Okay. Can I skip Yeah. I just, I just want to say that I... I've learned a lot just sitting here listening to all of your opinions and um, I do want an amicable 
resolution mm -hmm. to this. And I, the more I think about it, the more, and the more I listen to you, I think that the regulations were written for uh, a situation where a dog has probably been involved in more than one incident and, and not an isolated incident like this was. And I, so I think I'd like to withdraw my request for the nuisance finding. And um, I don't, I think, well, it's true that to carry that label around would be a, a disadvantage for Tater. And, um, okay. Thank I, I thank you all for your. It was, thank you. Too bad they didn't uh, have I, 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 No, no. I, I understand it was traumatic, and even when my dog bit someone else's, I was, I was very shaken up from it. It's, okay, why don't we? Uh, nothing uh, fun about it. Why don't we handle it a, a little? Well, she's withdrawing. Her differently right? here, you know, maybe a, a fair compromise for the time being. Let's just see how things are are going. Uh, maybe. Or if you could report back with some in writing, say in a couple of months, or see how it goes through the summer with just the status quo, and we'll take it from there. And if hopefully everything is going to go along fine, we're not going to be sitting back here again on this particular issue. And uh, maybe that might be a reasonable way to handle it for the time being. And this way, we're not telling people. As a concern by my colleagues on the board, that you know, we're telling people what they should and shouldn't do, maybe on their personal, private property. And I, I understand that there's another issue behind here. Also, if we knowingly have a problem here and we don't address it adequately, uh, and heaven forbid something happens, I mean, the liability is actually the least of the problem. I don't want to see anything bad happen that you know, either the animal or people. That's the major concern by far the major concern, but certainly we could potentially put ourselves at some degree of liability here, whether the dog goes to live in a brain tree or brain tree for that matter. Um, you know, so that's another issue here that if we know of a problem that we haven't addressed it properly, uh, and there was quite a bit of discussion back and forth on what would be a fair, equitable outcome. and certain types of restraints on the dog and we don't follow it and something happens, you know, I don't want to see anything bad. That's the first thing. But there is a potential liability to the town of Barry. Am I correct? It'd be like us saying we got a, you know, something we should have fixed on the road. We knew about it and for whatever reason somebody took four years to not deal with it then because we knew about it, first and foremost, we were liable. So that, that's a whole other issue, but I don't think it's going to, I certainly hope it doesn't come to that, because that would mean something very, very, very bad happened. But maybe as a middle ground for the time being, if you could just keep this posted, say, in So are you tabling this then? Or? Well, I think, am I correct, you wanted kind of like... She oh, recommended so dismissing it for she this time. She requested withdraw. Yeah, withdraw. Like a repeat uh, offender would be bringing a new thing to table and yeah. we can use this as a historical record to go to a second. It's just a story, not a not a record against yeah. it. It's and not I a know state how record. Kind of it's I've just been through a few of these. We don't thanks to you we don't have anywhere near the number we used to have. <laughs> but uh, we've had a few. <laughs> yeah, I know how far they can go and it can go at the actual disposition of the animal in the end. And we have done that. But I don't only on one occasion. That's the last thing in the world anybody really wants, but um, perhaps this might be a middle ground for the time being. I don't know if you call it tabling or whatever. Does that seem like a reasonable? I mean, it's it's totally up to you guys. Yeah, um, I know that. I, you know, I come from. I give a dog one bite, but this was a serious <coughs> bite. You know, normally I, I talk with the the people and say, you know, this is. I, I say to the dog owner, we now know you have an issue, let's work with mm -hmm. never seeing it happen again. I say to the uh, person, the person whose dog was attacked that, you know, normally um, I recommend that the owner, 
you know, take care of your vet bills. I can't make it happen. And that um, I will work with the person and make recommendations. I always say to them, you are within mm -hmm. your rights to write at the selectman. Okay. And that's how I usually handle it first. Okay. Unless, but this was very, very serious. Okay. What and that's why we ended up here. Board, think, my colleagues here think of my well, suggestion. My, my opinion is that, is that um, if the dog was on a leash, if you followed the leash law, then, then it would have been okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the standard leash law um, issue? Anytime it's like on your own property, it's supposed to be on a leash. There is no recommendation on the length of the leash, so someone can use a 40-foot leash if they want to, but it has to be on a leash. What's the is penalty for not following the law? Um, fine, I want to say it's 20, but I'm not positive I on don't that. But it's just a general so fine. Know. I usually, again, I usually give person first one is a verbal. Okay. Okay. Would you? Well, I, I would think that the ACO has this obviously in, in her files and now has record of the dog and knows the address. Um, I don't see any need for us to do any further storing of the information. Okay. And given the the, the wishes to withdraw, I, I would think that we should okay. allow this okay. motion okay. to be withdrawn. Okay. I would. Uh, I would move that we let the allow them to withdraw the motion. Okay. Do I have a second to that? I second that. Okay. Discussion. Uh, whatever the outcome, just to reiterate that should the dog return to Barry or whatever, I guess I can't. You know, I can imagine my counterparts <laughs> hear about this arrangement on a on another level <laughs> in the great general town of New Braintree, but. Uh, I do want to make certain that we take the bylaws of the town of Barry and the state on animal control very, very seriously, and we don't expect that this is coming back to us. And if there are problems, then the outcome could be considerably different. And you know, we certainly don't want to have to put down dog, put down a dog, uh, but it has been done. It, it, if it goes unchecked, and I, that can. Be be done. That is not our desire, but it has been done at some point. But certainly, I just want to reiterate that the board feels very strongly about our by the bylaws of this town and, and and you know the state laws that we operate under that give us the power for those bylaws. So we certainly don't want this back with us again. And uh, perhaps this is a middle ground. I think. You know, I'd like to thank you people, everyone, for being very reasonable. So we'll leave it at that, and I'll leave it with that caveat, if that seems fair to you. And then uh, if you could report back to us at an appropriate time and let us know how things are progressing. And hopefully things will progress, and it'll be very good. So, okay, with that, I guess we can conclude this for now. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. What? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, I did have a motion a second. My. Okay. Uh, now, what was your motion? The motion was to, to accept their accept their call. Okay. okay. There was a second. We had the discussion. Uh, I'll call for a vote in favor. Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. So thank you very much, and thank you for the uh, you. good luck, reasonableness, and you know the professionalism. So. Uh, we have a couple groups here tonight. Do yes. you mind if we skip around and just I don't mind everybody? at all. Nope, that's fine. Uh, so the next one I have that I saw Molly walked in for a one-day liquor license. Yep, she would be great. Molly, come yep. on up and we take you so you don't have to sit through the... <laughs> okay. All right, you got you the... Want to present it? Yeah, why don't you explain what you have? Senator, former Senator Burr's daughter. Okay, I don't, I don't know if we actually need to... Oh, Denied. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't know if we need to, you know, you can just... <laughs> His daughter April is getting married yeah. uh, next month. At so Ellie, you got that part of it, right? <laughs> um, and she's having the wedding at the, at the brewery. And um, so we already have the serving permit for beer, but she wants to have wine um, and one other mixed drink available. So um, we're applying for the one-day pouring permit so that we can have the wine and the okay. one other drink available. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
discussion? I don't know what our regulations are for establishing that. I have no objections, just as long as. Um, so Molly is here uh, because she ha holds a liquor license for the premise. This would be outside of her licensed premise. Um, the brewery will be closed to the public. This right. is a private event. So because she's looking to have wine, um, it's outside of her licensed. Her license what we is give her to license provide for. beer. Yeah. I understand that. I understand the distinction for a mixed drink and wine beer. Yeah. beer. Although I usually bulk beer and wine together, that's just me. Yeah. I just don't know what our rules are for establishing. Yep. They have to. Uh, we, anything, yeah, we, we follow ABCC rules, so because she's looking to serve outside of her license, she's required to get a one-day liquor permit or yep. license, whatever you're Is choosing there, to serve. There's no yep. other requirements. Is similar to the or? other event where oh. you had another you vendor come on to pour wine for you while you, while you did the beer and like they were outside. I know yeah, it's a wedding versus the other sure thing, thing, but yeah, they, yeah, you had some They got the one day liquor license or one day license because they were hosting it, whereas she's hosting this event, but it's her license does not allow her right. to do this. Is there a predetermined fee schedule for a one day liquor license? Um, I believe it's $100. A hundred dollars with the five dollar technology, which we have everything here. Um, so we're not breaking any new ground here. No, no we're not breaking no. any ground. Works here. for me. Yeah, yeah. this is. Um, we've done this in other establishments in the town where, um, say, they want to have um, an outside event where their license doesn't cover them to have it outside. Mm -hmm. um, so they apply for a one day to have this special one, whatever they're doing outside for the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to accept. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Do you have any questions or comments for us? No. Okay, with that, I'll call for a vote. All right. All right. All right. Okay, I guess we're all set. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Do you, do you want to hold on, Adam, or do you want to? I think these guys have a quick request, correct? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So? Youth Commission. Yeah. 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 Um, so the Why don't you come up so everybody, you know, <laughs> uh, you can bring the whole true puppet. <laughs> That's okay, whatever. That's okay, come on up. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the Youth Commission, we were looking for approval for two items on our budget. One would be um, we want to use $500 to get 42 tickets to donate to the library to have available for the public for the Harbor Cruises in Boston. Um, so that would become part of the summer program at the library, um, donated from the Youth Commission. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to um, spend the 250 to get 100 books as well to donate to the library as part of the summer reading program, because the library um, distributes books as part of the summer reading prizes for every child that reads for the last couple weeks of the summer. Um, and we're also giving them out at the Southbury um, concerts. We're doing a pop-up playground there and giving out books. Okay. I just heard about this pop-up playground. Yes. And so, and then 200. It's 250 for the 250 books. for the books. And it's 500 for yeah, the tickets. Yeah, Is that out of fiscal year 17 or 18's budget? 17. The current budget, yes. Okay. That's, that's still in there? Okay. Yeah. They just got a board to actually the spend their money. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we have the they're doing good now. Yeah, it's very good. We For did. about another week, yeah. <laughs> we don't normally get oh, these good. type of that's good. questions. <laughs> just asking if they <laughs> spend their own money. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Is <laughs> it's very unusual. I would make a motion. That's why we sit here like kind of like take, taking aback a little bit. Yeah. This is a little different. I make a motion to um, allow them to spend the funds as they requested here. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay. Any uh, questions or Phil? Did you have any questions? No. Okay. Okay. With that said, I'll call for a vote. In favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank okay. you much. Do you have anything else? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you for behaving so well, you two. You were very quiet and well behaved. They're always good. And this is how you very good. Yeah, they get them started in. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Adam. Come right up. 
Howdy, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? I am well, thank you. I'd just like to say that uh, I'm sure, in terms of your career, that this is a, a good thing for you, but I think that we are probably going to miss your services very greatly, and I think you've done a really good job for the town of Barry, so uh, it's kind of a mixed emotion for us. I'm always happy to see people move on and up in life and improve themselves, but at the same time, You've done a good job for us, but thank you. Now that it's a backdrop, I guess we can ask. <laughs> so <laughs> why are you here today? So why are you? <laughs> um, so I submitted a letter of resignation, um, partly because I was seeing over the past couple of months the regional IT agreement, as it sits now, not working. Um, so I'm using this as an opportunity, or I'm hoping that this is an opportunity for both Barry and Rutland to kind of hit a reset button on the current agreement and kind of take a step back and say, okay, why was this not working? What can we do to improve it? I don't think you should um, throw out regionalization. I think there's definitely benefits. Um, I mean, the shared uh, hardware infrastructure is huge. That saves both towns about five to $10,000 a year. Um, so I think there's benefits in sharing services, sharing equipment. Uh, sharing resources, uh, but I just don't think that the current structure of the regional agreement um, is working out well. Uh, I don't think departments are getting the response times that they deserve. I don't think um, it's fair to the person that has to fill the position. So, for example, I have to serve uh, a lot of 24-7 departments. I'm only one person. Uh, God forbid I took it decided to go somewhere without cell service um, what I, I, I don't know what would happen um, as far as backfilling if there was an issue uh, thunderstorms create issues for us because uh, of the radio towers um, so if something did go down I'm not sure there's no levels of redundancy built in to the regional department um, so that's, that's kind of uh, I guess why I'm so one thing I just want to add to that is um, I hope that you guys, all of you, are aware that we just completed year one um, in February, I believe, yep. January, February, mm -hmm. of this model. And this model was unique in the state of Massachusetts, whereas we had a very hard time trying to find comparable job descriptions, um, stuff like that, before we hired um, Adam on as the IT director. So. This particular model was new to us, new to a lot of new, and I think you know Adam coming forward and basically saying the, mo the model itself is not working. It's not a matter of um, you know the personnel or the, it's just the makeup of it just doesn't. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. so some of the challenges we face is obviously time, um, and allocation of time, um, and then having to drive. Between uh, municipalities all the time, or coming in on a Saturday or Sunday because uh, someone in public safety is having an issue, which you can't blame them. They're a 24/7 department, so their their three to 11 or their 11 to seven is their work day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's their nine to five. Exactly. So it's it's not it's not fair. It's not fair to them. Uh, I think they're they're the ones that I think were heavy heavy hitters calling at 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, forgot my password. Um, but that's the same, can't get, can't get mad at them. It's the same thing as if someone forgot their password um, at 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, so that's, that's just how it is. Um, I'd recommend the town looks into different options with Rutland um, and seeing how you can continue to make it work. Um, I think it's really beneficial uh, but I think this is an opportunity to hit a reset button and say okay let's relook at how everything functions um, for the towns. Are you saying pretty much the issue is the 24-7 coverage that one man can't keep? 24-7 coverage and if we did because I was I was looking at adding other towns we had Paxton and Princeton interested in joining uh, but the process to onboard them um, is kind of slow because of the way uh, government works. <laughs> so, 
So it, it was going to take until, so I think Paxton and Prince were interested in joining July, August of 2016. They wouldn't actually be able to join until July, August of 2017. Um, and that would have helped address some of the funding issues to add additional staffing. Um, but even then, once you start adding additional staffing, now we're looking at how are we going to pay those staff members to drive now even a further distance, because now we're gonna have to have people mm. um, drive from uh, maybe Barry to Paxson or Paxson to Rutland. Um, so then and now, we're, now we're facing those challenges. Um, so th there's, there's a couple different challenges, I think. What kind of things do you recommend then moving forward? What's your recommendation? I think there's some vendor models that may work. Um, I think not getting rid of the um, shared hardware, I think that's that's a huge uh, cost savings to both, to both municipalities. Uh, basically what I did with the hardware sharing was I made it rather than very purchasing two server infrastructures, uh, or two sets of servers, um, one for redundancy purposes. Uh, it's set so Barry fails over to Rutland, and then Rutland fails over to Barry. So we were able to not purchase redundant hardware um, for Barry and the same for Rutland. Um, so we so have our own primary yeah. servers, but we're using each other as the backup. As backups. Um, like virtual which, servers within. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Which just saves money for both ends. Because the backup's only good if you need it. Um, exactly. If you don't need it, you just spend you could you know you, you spend ten thousand dollars in infrastructure that still has to get replaced because the time's ticking and it's still getting outdated. Um, mm -hmm. So for towns this small, it, it's, it's sometimes difficult to uh, justify purchasing um, the level of backup that they should have. Uh, but with cost sharing between towns, it, it works out. Um, but I would, I would look at all all models. Uh, vendor models, maybe talking with Rutland to see how you can reshape the, um, the current regional agreement. Uh, part, of the, part of the other issues is I don't think the, proportionally, I know when the agreement was first put forth, um, they just did 33% across the board, uh, mm -hmm. 33 for Barry, 33 for Rutland, and 33 for Dispatch. I think Dispatch is less than 33%, I think Rutland's more than 33% of utilization. Um, and then Barry, I'd say, is kind of spot on as far as... Uh, Do you have those those hours logged in any way to have an idea where they went? Because that would certainly help us in, in reforming the grant to see where that really goes. Yes. Second question, do you really want out or do you want to stay if we can fix some things? Like perhaps... Um, on call fees for after late hours and things like that that can be assessed to whoever needs. Someone forgets their, their mm -hmm. you know, their, their call, we can have a fee assessed for that. A fee which goes obviously to you for coming outside the service hours. We don't count that in the tracked hours, but that's a fee mm -hmm. um, for going to do a reset because someone couldn't keep track of their password. So I think, um, so I'd rather not see you go, personally. So. And I don't know if that's possible, but that's I think I'm thinking out loud here because yeah. we get to do it. I mean, I think we all would have that same comment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of us understand um, where you know the time is. You know, where you know everybody has maybe an idea or wants something done yesterday or what have you. But we all, I think, understand the time. You know, everything is prioritized, and that's just how it worked. But I mean, maybe we can, you know, talk to Rutland, see what kind of vendor model we can come up with. I mean, I'm sure there's got to be a solution. Is to it possible it, so. to find qualified vendors that you'd feel comfortable coming in and working with? Let's say you were still doing it and you didn't get the calls after hour. Do you have uh, vendors that you'd feel comfortable coming in and working on these systems if they were on, so, if they so were part on call? Of, part of the reason. I did this, I mean, it's not a secret. I have a private IT company, mm -hmm. and I know that, and that when, because we did start looking at adding additional staff. Uh, Rutland just couldn't come up with the funds this year. Barry was able to come up, come up with the funds, um, which would have then even made the regional agreement more complex. Um, but with Rutland having to shrink their budget, 
it wasn't it wouldn't be fair to Barry because now Barry in theory would technically have to shrink their budget as well when maybe Barry's more prepared to invest financially Barry's prepared to invest more into technology um, and just looking at it and one day I just said okay I'm gonna quote this out as if I was doing it as a vendor mm -hmm. and that's really where I started to see okay for my own pricing um, I was looking Rutland was I think they came out to like thirty-five thousand a year, where right now they're spending twenty-seven thousand. Barry came out to twenty-six thousand, where they're spending twenty-seven thousand, and then Dispatch came out to about fifteen thousand, where they're spending um, twenty-seven thousand now. Um, so I, I and, and then if we're going to add additional staff to Barry, we're looking at a minimum of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to get a part-time person for ten hours, fifteen hours a week. Um, which then would bring Barry's total uh, expenditures on IT up to uh, spending twenty-seven thousand now, so um, forty-two thousand, mm -hmm. which is more than I think they should be spending. It's just a matter of having the right resources to be able to spread to spread out. Um, so I was also looking at it like from a vendor model. I believe I could do it better in that regards. Um, so that, that's kind of where I was getting stuck. Is it's like, do I, do I lead Barry and Rutland down a path where they're gonna spend more than they should be spending um, to house an in, internal department, or do we kind of hit a reset button and let everybody rethink everything, and then see does a vendor model make sense for us, or no, it doesn't. Actually, it doesn't make sense. Let's we'll stick with a. Um, Let's stick with a uh, in-house department like like you have been doing. Um, market trends in the private sector is people are starting to outsource IT. A lot of hospitals, you see that move happening in uh, hospitals right now, partly because of liability, um, but they're starting to outsource <coughs> IT. And you're starting to see managed IT because things are becoming automated um, and kind of replacing <laughs> themselves, like passwords with biometrics now. Um, your devices, I mean, iPhones have, most devices now have fingerprint readers and surfaces have facial recognition. Um, so that automates the password process, um, which if you had an internal department, it's kind of tough to make sure that they're moving along that, uh, that road. So I mean, I, I really looked at this from two angles. I was looking at it, and that, it's really, I mean, that's a decision, I guess, of the boards of both Rutland and Barry to look at both models and decide which one they think um, makes the most sense for the town. But I was looking at it from both angles as well. And I I just think cost wise it's not fair to lead Barry down a path where they're gonna spend fifteen thousand a year more and then still not get the level of mm -hmm. service they need. Because you really do need someone that's twenty four seven and if we add someone ten hours a week, it's still not bringing that twenty four seven and then odds are that person's gonna wanna work um, close to the same hours I'm already working. So it does overlap coverage versus extending coverage. So in order to go out to vendor services, you just have to put a bid out, correct? Request for proposals, is that what that is? Um, it'd be an RF, RFQ for, uh, you can do an RFQ. IT's an RF for qualifications, not a, a request, you can defined do an RF, scope? You can do a request for quotes, um, because it's under 50,000 under the procurement law or you can do a RFP, a request for proposals, which is typically over uh, 50,000 services. Um, in Barry's case, it'd be under 50,000, so you can either solicit for quotes or you can do a full uh, proposal. Um, I should say that uh, Rutland has already put out a request for uh, quotes to three different vendors. They haven't come in yet. Actually, uh, Adams Firm is one of them. Hmm. Adams wow. Firm is one of the three that Rutland is soliciting. And Barry could do the same solicitation mm -hmm. in the same. I've asked Adam to take a look at the Rutland solicitation and and tailor the one, one to Barry based on what they have. I mean, there's different components to it needs to be tailored to Barry, and then we could also uh, do a request for quotes as well. If he does that, though, does that not exclude him from bidding on that same because he wrote the bid spec? So I reached out to Ethics 
to check on that. Um, and there's a form that I fill out and just saying that, so it allows me to guide the town uh, as far as generating an RFQ or request for quotes or an RFP. Um, and the form just says that I have a financial interest in actually providing a quote um, to the town. Mm -hmm. um, and then it clears me of anything. Uh, and they also said that if I was selected, it's as if I never left the town. I'm still considered a town employee, it's just my payment model has changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what they're saying. Oh, wait. So you still accrue retirement years? Yeah. Then you're still a town employee, though? That's what I said. I was like, same thing. I was like, I'm, I'm going to be sending employees to the town to address issues or to work with the town on issues. I'm like, yes, because I'm the sole owner. Um, it's as if I'm still a town employee June 30th and June, July 1st. There is no overlap. Um, well, I think employed by is a better phrase than employee. It, uh, employed, yeah. Difference, difference. Yeah, yeah we'd have to. Uh, I guess we'd have to look into that. One. Taxes, taxes. I have a whole. Email yeah, for it's the a very. Board. Yeah. Uh, the taxes. So Barry would know. You'd pay me as a vendor, just like a normal vendor. A contractor. A contractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah, sure, Bruce. I'm Bruce Tana. I'm, I'm Barry. I'm here on behalf of my wife Natalie Tana, and she was supposed to be here on behalf of the Barry Hulse Center. Was there an article? Someone seeking a marijuana license. Okay, just let, let's finish this. There has me. been, yes. Yeah, well, but can I finish? We'll finish this IT thing first and then I'll take that up, okay? On the marijuana license. All right. Okay, so I'll just wait. Yeah, yeah just wait a minute. We'll, yeah, the, uh, everybody yeah. gets. What? Finish, we go one topic at a time. So yeah. We, we try to I'll, send. I'll, we're all. No, I'm going to ask, I've got to ask some questions about this. I obviously haven't seen the IT agreement. Uh, what I understand is. Um, it need to be 90 days before notification before anybody got out of it or canceled it. And we are the lead on the IT. So are we not still responsible to provide IT for our mutual IT agreement for the, for the next? I think um, Rutland is not looking to leave the agreement. Okay. So regardless of the fact that they're covering their own butts here, don't we still have to provide within the agreement IT? At, at, least Phil, for, yes. at, least for 90, at least for a ninety at least for a ninety day term. Phil met with Rutland. Today. I met with uh, Rutland this afternoon. The idea is to take a period of time to take a look at the regional agreement and see whether it makes sense or to perhaps modify it in some way. In the meantime, Rutland makes wants to make sure there's no discontinuation of IT services. So they're they're doing the solicitation to get a vendor on board to handle their needs for the time being. And Barry could do the same thing, but during this period of time, we could take a look at the regional agreement to see how we might want to structure it for the future. I sent you a copy, you may have not looked at it yet, but I sent a summary of what Margaret Narkowitz of Rutland um, indicated at our meeting this afternoon. It's a summary of our discussion, which I think uh, addresses your concerns. I read it, yes, uh, not enough time to look it over thoroughly, but it doesn't really change the address of my concern. If, if our agreement, regardless of what they want to do with it, is, is a signed agreement and we are obligated um, to provide the IT specialist, we need to continue that or we're in breach of our agreement, which I, which I don't want to be. Um, I, I that's don't believe point. that's the case. Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I don't believe that. I don't see how it's not. Well, I guess because nobody is, no, the, uh, nobody is withdrawing from the agreement. They're just, we're just taking some time. No, what he's saying, if we fail to provide an IT director, we're the ones in breach because they didn't withdraw, is yes. all he's saying. It doesn't mean they would hold it against us. We need to provide an IT specialist per our agreement. Right, but what if we it, sent an agreement with Rutland saying we both agree that we need to re-look at this, mm -hmm. that we're in agreement that we both agree yeah that this model is not working and it's it a mutually it's agreed just, <clears throat> yeah. not to worry about all that this this is really Bad getting to the point of my concern so it says just to put it out there with or without the agreement all of that 
I do apologize because I just got to get it out there. We got your notice of resignation on June 12th, saying you're going to resign on the 30th. Today is the first day I am being notified the reasons why. I'm a little concerned that this agreement not working and building up to that recognition didn't lead to coming to us saying it's not working. What can we do before you want to leave? Instead, you want to leave. So now we got less than three weeks to make a decision on what we're going to do with our partner. Yet the best option that apparently is before us is just to hire you as a contractor. I know there's options. There's other vendors we'd go out to bid. But in three weeks, both towns are now been pretty much pushed right up against the wall and said, I think your best option is to hire me as a contractor. I'm just putting out a perspective. Okay, and for me, that doesn't give us a good job preparing, nor does it give us a good job after we just went through six months of budgeting to know how this is going to affect the budget. And thirdly, not just the budget, but a, a concern I have with being an IT director is when you work for the town and you're not a vendor, the only thing that matters to you is what's best for the town. Once you're a vendor, state law says what's best for you is what's best on that contract. Now, there are certain laws that put in ethics and things like that, so you're not going to go around it. And, and don't get me wrong, Anna, I'm not thinking you intentionally are saying, how can I manage this and get somebody? But I'm disappointed, is I guess the best way to put it, that, and please forgive me, I know it's not your burden, it's our burden, but I think you recognize the constant turnover we've had for a year. And going into this, we haven't even finished negotiating a contract with the new town administrator, and we find out you want to leave also so by the time the new town administrator is in office, you're technically not even here to pass on anything you can to help them. Not to say you wouldn't help by answering the phone call and working after, but you have no obligation. And usually when you don't, I don't think it's fair to us to ask a lot of you at that point because you are looking to make the next move wherever you're going. And so I just feel like that's the disappointment. Everything happened here, and there wasn't even a, you know, it's not working. We need to come together and come up with a plan before I'm going to leave, and here's why, because it's not working, you need to create a new plan. And so I just want you to know where I'm coming from, okay? It, I'm not, this has nothing to do with me not being thankful for what you've done for the town, because I think you've done a lot. I think you put a lot of time in that probably went well beyond your expectations of ours, commitments. <clears throat> I appreciate that, I understand that. So I'm not trying to beat you up for what you've done. And sometimes you just come to a point, you gotta make a decision, and I realize that. So I apologize, because I haven't really been here for the whole time and had all that input. But I just needed to state a feeling. I think one thing to keep in mind though is that he did come before you and the Finance Committee and say that it's mm -hmm. not working, and he needed We to asked him assistant. to go get someone every time. We authorized him to go no, get and, somebody. And we, the advertisement went out, but what I'm saying is is that was kind of... Well, the last the, meeting he said he got a lot of applications. Of that so I didn't see, working. like, the end coming. I thought that was opening the options, not closing the door on the options. So to address the issue of... Just to go in order here. Understood. Just understood. to address the issue of uh, what in the agreement, what happens when there's a leave of absence of the director of IT, it states um, that the town is, each member is responsible for finding their own cover. Um, so when, an I, when the position becomes vacant or if uh, I take vacation, the uh, Rutland is responsible for finding their own cover uh, for IT services. Dispatch is responsible for finding their own cover. Barry is responsible for finding theirs. Um, so it kind of puts the agreement on in, in hold or in limbo um, is the way that it's worded. But does that define a timeline for us to procure a new IT director? Not, not it just I, does state, though, that Rutland and Barry will work together in choosing that so they both have equal voice. 
in the new director or again potentially the new agreement um, I, I think that's pretty clear then we're going to have to advertise and look for IT um, <laughs> so and it's I would I would caution you not trying to be anything but business like um, I do similar business with a different town in a different manner and um, there is a risk involved in going on your own that we may not select you when we come to IT again um, for a contract. As Matt said, the last time we talked about um, getting an assistant, how much that was going to help out, it left me with the impression that things would be going well once we get the assistant and that would be coming soon. And this is, frankly, a slap in the face to see it come this quick to me. It's, it's frustrating. Understand you want to do what's right for you in I'm never going to say that's not, that's not a good thing for you to do. Um, but it's something we have to consider when moving forward with um, anything in IT. Um, I would be much more cautious um, when we write a contract for stipulations on timelines um, needed before someone leaves such a position because I, I think three weeks doesn't give us much time to really, give, given as you know how involved it is, and um, we need a little more leeway to be able to fit someone else in to, to, to overlap properly and have a seamless um, conversion. And I, I feel that we will not have that. And I'm disappointed in that aspect. Um, so I just say try, try to consider that as well. That um, I, I think that gives us a, a raw deal here. Not, not that that's your intention. But I feel that's how we are right now. I don't think we're going to have a seamless transition. And I think it's, it, it's um, going to change how I would want to see a contract written in the future for this position for a director. I think there will be restrictions on required notice and serious substantial financial penalties if someone should walk off the job before um, the agreed upon date, which would leave us hanging because that position now needs to be filled quickly. And quickly usually means more money. And um, I can't change the agreement, how it's written, or the past, but that's my looking forward to But the, the agreement is with Rutland and not with Adam. Just um, I'm, no, I'm talking the agreement with our IT director when we have an IT director. Your con you're talking about contract. Our contract with the IT director. Are I you contracting? We, we need to be. Okay, so it's just based on job description. That, to me, says we need a contract and we need some language that gives us protection in the future. Shame on us for not having it. I'm not faulting Adam for doing what's right for him. It just, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I understand considerations for what's best for him, not for I us. Think it's doing up not only for him, but what's good for the, for the region as well. I don't think it's a, it's a selfish thing. No, it was more the timeline that was the concern, the not necessarily the end result. So please forgive me. I'm not. No, that's, and I, I was afraid of that when I picked June 30th, but I picked June 30th because it's the, so there were discussions I was having before with uh, department heads. Um, really trying to get a feel for how everyone feels about how the, the agreement's gone. Um, this is something I've talked with Margaret about, I've talked with Mike at Dispatch, um, and then obviously with turnover here has made it difficult for things to, for information to flow. I mean, it's no one's, it's no one's fault. Um, when someone leaves, information leaves with that person. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I, I was discussing with Heather uh, when she was still here. Um, I think it was actually in my, uh, performance evaluation she wrote in there um, the need for additional support um, so the conversations were happening and I apologize that they didn't come more direct uh, to the boards uh, but I there the conversations were happening in the back end um, and, it, and I really feel like it's not fair uh, to the departments um, and the reason I chose June 30th is because of the fiscal year ending um, rather than, I figured it's, it, what it allows, and I, I've told Rutland this, I will be here still to help Barry with whatever transition they choose. Um, I'm not here to uh, burn bridges, hurt relationships with the town, obviously I understand town operations need to happen. Um, so I'm here to still help you guys with whatever transition you pick, and then however long it takes. Um, I just chose June 30th because I feel like it's better. Unless you feel otherwise, then we can work out at a different agreement. Because um, I think Rutland felt 
I mean, this we can revisit this conversation with Rutland and say, okay, maybe June 30th isn't the best date. Let's change it um, to a different date to buy everyone more time. Uh, but I thought June 30th was the best date because of the fiscal year mm -hmm. ending. So it makes billing easier. Uh, there is no more calculations that need to happen to bill Rutland. Um, but if we want to come up with an agreement, if you guys want to still keep me as a Barry employee for a month, um, if you feel like that's better, then we can work on an agreement uh, for that portion. Um, but that way there, we're not billing each. I just feel like it was going to become more complicated um, trying to calculate if Adam worked for 23 days, 23 days. Um, Math is easy. Mm -hmm. No, Math I understand what you're saying. When it, come, when it comes to the benefits and tracking, because I, I would still be full-time, um, and you'd have to calculate in my benefits. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that, that I think that presents a lesser problem than us trying to find IT immediately to, to get this sorted out. Um, if we need to look at vendoring versus, you know, a director again for model, I think some time would be a fantastic thing, because that's my concern. Our, quite frankly, our focus has been on, you know, it's been on this almost almost entirely except for all the other distractions we've had and I would rather have this as I said with our interviews give give some, some proper time and not be something we, we glass over at a meeting here in 20 minutes and I for one would like to see him stay on a little longer and give us some time to sort it out be it hiring him back as a vendor or someone else or getting something established I think that's a great offer if, if he would consider to stay longer to allow us the transition that we need to figure out what we're going to do and this should be on our on the top of our list at our next meeting my opinion I would like to ask this just um, the reason I'd like you to stay on more would be a little continuity with the new town administrator when they come in that's the biggest point because no matter what you tell us it's really not going to translate the same way as it would that someone can sit in the office, write up notes, build a plan, build a spec, whether it's going to be writing up a new job description and go for an IT director or... And he's competent in IT. Or does he have the knowledge to represent the town with a vendor so he can read through the lines and understand what's going on? So it's like, okay, you're saying that, I get it. Um, that might... But let the person come in and explain for themselves what they can or can't. I don't like feeling like trying to make that assumption yet. That's more the reason why it would be nicer to have a little bit more time if you're willing and we can do it. I would even recommend to this board, depending on the situation going into tomorrow night, if we've got to make any adjustment, we could do that. The only adjustment we made was we took um, Rutland's portion out of the budget. Right. I think we need to put it all back in. Rutland did not budget for that. So they cannot pay in for that. Am I correct? I may um, be wrong. It's in, it's I in don't know. It's in Rutland's budget as purchase services, so it doesn't matter where it gets billed to. Okay. Um, so I don't know how much they technically budgeted 20, they compared budget to what they've been budgeting. Uh, 28000 and For each both? 28000 for Rutland, 28000 for dispatch. So, so that's about 56,000. So it's about their normal mm -hmm. two thirds. Yeah. Yeah. Number. It's gonna, it's gonna so, so I think one of the. What I think the reason I'm bringing this up is in a way, what we might be doing is getting a little bit of an overlap. Whether we save that by going to a vendor after that, and then so we're not adjusting the budget because of that, that's fine. But if we think we need to say, you know what, to keep them for another month. It may cost the town another 5000 but it's going to lay it out a little smoother, give us a better transition, a better setup, then maybe that 5000 is worth the investment if we can find it. Um, so that's all I'm saying. And I would, if he's willing, I would recommend us working out something like that to depend on what is his normal, say, monthly income. I'm sure it's, I don't know what it is. I don't even how, want to state it. How often do you call back? Um, in unreasonable hours of the night, should we say? Two or three times a week. Two or three times a week. And how, I, how, Sunday, I worked some last Sunday. How long are you Friday out when night. you? And how long you out when you do those? Well, it's a 40, 30 to forty-five minute drive for me, so I'm gonna drive here, obviously. Um, and then it depends on what the issue is. Uh, I've been using um, the remote software that I purchased 
through my business, I mean, it doesn't cost me more to use it for the town. Um, and it doesn't make sense. I don't think it makes sense for the town to spend $5,000 a year on remote software that's designed So to you can roll, remote in and see what's so going I've, on. I've okay. been using the remote software, which has cut down a lot of the drive time. Um, but it's, it's things like uh, some, and the other issue is it comes down to user training too. There's no, user training would address a lot of the issues that we have. Um, getting a regular training regimen in place. Um, How close are you to having an assistant, to having an apprentice? I have, I have something that I would pick for the town um, right now, and I just told them I want to wait and see where everything goes because I don't want to pull them down a road. Um, it's yeah. not worth uh, pulling them down that road. Now, you mean under your company? You have someone deemed that you would have assign this town oh um, under my company yes we have a, I have a team of seven people oh this other person wasn't necessarily what you're just talking no, about no this that. other person was i went through the interviews the, interviews mm -hmm. the interview process um which again i wasn't uh <laughs> too thrilled with some of the candidates we got um but i got one that was really good he's a high school student um tons of awards already going through uh all the different computer science programs that are out there um Graduated high school or continuing high school? He's, he's going into his senior year. So he's looking for summer work? Yes, and that's the other issue. What's What kind of cost would that incur for him? Um, and how much time would we have before? Uh, I had $3,000 budget, if that's what you're asking. What was the, were you deciding to pay right for that? I don't uh, even think it far? got there. Yeah, no, I don't think we, we didn't think think get to that. that far. We didn't get to that piece. And that's more why I was thinking maybe the month would help us do a better transition with that understanding. Well, if he can, even accepting that maybe you can't make the same commitment you had made, mm -hmm. it may still be better for us if you can be there to some level until either the bid process can be closed on the vendor concept. And that would also give And us, that's all I'm asking. That would also give us time to look at your callbacks and and an idea of allocation if we want to work out this agreement and re re rework the agreement um, so that people are, are paying their fair share. And when we're having these callbacks at different hours, there's some way of compensating them for that above and beyond. I mean, let's face it, I mean, a 24-hour firefighter, they're sleeping there. They're already there. But if you're home and you have to get up and go do something, um, I do it at night a lot. I know it's an inconvenience. And, um, so yes, it's just where you would have job. to talk to Rutland also. And what, one of the things that I guess kind of led me to start thinking down this path as well was um, when I, I was having a meeting with, uh, I think actually Phil was there too, Margaret just looked at me and said, uh, what's your ideal situation? What's the most ideal situation for IT? When I was really starting to say, hey, it's not working, we need to work out something else. And I was like, honestly, about... Uh, 400,000 to 500,000 in salaries, money to like, allocate salaries. So you can really get that 24 seven coverage that you really need. And then I started thinking like, wait a second, that's one, not cost effective to the towns, two, something that um, I already have in a vendor model. Um, and it, the time is just shared across um, different organizations. So you still get that 24 seven coverage, but at the price um, that the towns have currently been, close to the price that the towns have currently been paying. Dispatch would save money, Rutland would spend more. They have more computers than, they have more employees than Barry. Um, it's usually defined by uh, actual workstations. Usually is the model for pricing it out? Um, yes and no, yeah. Okay. I got like, a couple different, um, it depends on the vendor. Each vendor does it differently. Okay. Um, so, and that's, um, and, and the, the other thing is, I mean, I was punching cables down, which is, uh, which is not an issue. I have no issue punching cables down. I'm just not efficient at it. It takes me eight minutes per end, where it takes uh, the guy I have that, that's what he does. He pulls cables and punches, down, punches them down. It takes him four minutes per end. Um, Don't get me wrong, our IT group can do it also, where I work. I but uh, they always down. sub out it's an electrician an to do job. all of that work 
and then they come in and just watch to make sure it gets programmed right. And bring it all down. I mean, that's. I think the one thing. You're you keep right. In there's mind. roles that it, it's, if you don't do it every day, it just drags. I think the one thing to keep in mind, um, as a department, using Adam is, I think if Adam's recommending this is a better viable option for us, that's you know something that we need to take into consideration. Um, and, and I think, you know, before we had Adam, we had departments that were using, you know, company A, company B, company C. We'd hire, uh, you know, one company. They came in and did large infrastructure, which we did have a lot of good infrastructure projects that Heather was able to get accomplished. But it was a matter of then none of us knew what to do with this great technology that we had. Um, so that's... Just so you know, that's my concern about losing a direct IT director that's in the employee of the town. We can only do a vendor agreement for three years, and then we got to do it again, or there's only so many years. You get limited with this type of procurement and how many years you can keep the same contractor right, when you're a municipality. But we're in a situation now where we've, we've just completed year one and our model's not working. So it would be much I think wiser a to be wiser to be in a three-year contract and at least know for three years our IT is going to be a managed service. So, and that's the other thing is so um, I would recommend a 12-month contract um, because if you run into situations where Rutland was running into a budget issue, um, they'd be able to contract, reduce the, you know what I'm saying, like reduce the contract on a 12-month basis. I wouldn't sign up. But I mean, th those are... It makes the original contract more difficult to write. To have language to allow that without us having to cut back, and I guess that's that's, that's the other benefit, and this is the other benefit I saw with. Um, I'm not trying to sell you guys on a vendor model. I'm just trying to explain the process and the logic that I was going through. Um, one of the issues, and when I, it really upset me when I lost Paxton in Princeton um, because they just said, they said, okay, you're gonna Barry's gonna take 12 months to bring us on board. Uh, they just went and found their own. Um, I think one went to a vendor model, the other found someone that wanted to work out like hours outside of their normal job. Um, and that's that's the path they went. So we kind of lost them. Um, there was so much benefit that I sought out of that. So it's almost like we kind of lost a sale. We lost a way to grow uh, the department, which really needed to happen. I think that was one of the first things when I started here. I said, okay, we need to grow this because I'm not redundant. If I got in a car accident on the way here, um, what would, you know what I mean? I'm not redundant. There's no redundancy built into me um, or redundancy built into the department or position. Uh, so when I was looking at the vendor model, I was looking at, um, it becomes more flexible for each individual town when it comes to the service piece, especially if it's on a 12 month contract or 12 month agreement with the vendor. Um, if Barry has extra money, uh, saying that we have extra money, um, but if they have more money, they want to be more aggressive in IT, um, and let's say they want to do a 12-month campaign of running um, classes, or they want to bring Wi-Fi to the center of town, or something, you know what I mean? They want to be more aggressive in some way. Uh, they would be able to increase the funds allocated um, to their IT spending, where right now you kind of can't because you're stuck in that regional agreement. Um, and then same thing with Rutland. If Rutland, when Rutland took over doing the Wi-Fi in the schools, rather than just having me go in and do it, um, we would, they would have been able to plan and say, okay, this is a project that's above what, we, um, what, we're, what we're looking to do. Let's try to just expand our contract and services a little bit for this 12 months. Um, I think it puts each town in a better position when it comes to purchasing labor, and then vice, it's on the other side where if the town's facing facing uh, financial trouble, you're able to renegotiate it down um, versus uh, trying to increase it. Um, and I I know the model, at least I have, with the vendor relationship, we um, break everything up into teams. So what would happen is the town itself would be. Um, and this is the model I would look for. So if you can find another vendor that does this, great. Um, I would like to know about them. Uh, but <clears throat> I break everything out into teams. 
so the town itself would be assigned a team. Uh, and it's not only just a tech team, it's also a graphic design team because a lot of technology uh, now needs great graphic design because graphic design is just a form of communication. Uh, so to be able to train people properly, to be able to make user-friendly applications, user-friendly help documents, it needs to be designed nicely. Um, and it would address the issue with like the website where I got bogged down. Uh, well, there would be a design team dedicated to make sure they can crank through that. Because uh, the website, social media, all of that is becoming part of IT. It's becoming more complex um, as far as the role IT plays in an organization. Uh, so basically, the way I set up vendor models is it's the town would be assigned a team. They would always have the same uh, five people, same seven people, um, whatever size team needs to be allocated to the town. Um, it would always be the same people responding to the town, building relationships with the town. Um, there would still be an IT director, per se, who's uh, providing direction, going to department head meetings. Um, going to town meeting and acting in that capacity, but the town may be able to scale back on someone playing mm -hmm. that role, per se, because the direction piece maybe is 10, 10, 15 hours a month. What would be um, left, would be the, the short question here, what would be left <laughs> of the model um, if we're gonna have an agreement, what's left within the shared agreement, just the hardware? The redundancy and surface. What what sort of thing would have to be left in an agreement? And I, I assume with the vendor models, we'd be talking about each town would have their own agreement with the vendor. That would allow us to to increase or decrease our amount of service that we want. But there still has to be an aspect within the agreement which covers the infrastructure, the hardware, the, the cabling, and things like that. Um, have you accounted for that in your in your models and your um, because that would be our challenge. We would be to rewrite this agreement in such a way that the director position is gone, but the rest of the agreement stays intact. And then how do we cover working on the servers or working on the cabling or working with software updates, if need be, um, as, as far as who does that within our agreement? Mm -hmm. um, so does, that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, Rutland and Barry still share still have physically separate infrastructures. Right, um, but we rely on each other's service, as you said, for our redundancy. For, for failover purposes. Um, and that requires some sort of agreement between these communities for us to use them as a fail, say, if, or vice versa. So that's where you get the reset button and really think that one through and say, how, how do we want this? Um, and this is why we need time. <laughs> you see where I'm getting at? Yep. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to look at, but I'm 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 approaching it right. That's what we'd be at if we had vendor services separate. We'd be at renegotiating our agreement. Really, what else would we have to address in our agreement if we did separate vendor services? How's that for a question? Exactly. Or the other. No, I'm asking you. If um, you're doing separate vendor services, the only, the they only they have company A, we have B, and, and they have C outside of the IT vendor services, what's left for us to include in our agreement that wouldn't be covered by the vendor services that we would have to have an agreement on? Uh, you'd have to have an agreement on the level of service each town receives. Because um, obviously if you're counting on Rutland to be your failover, you don't want them to neglect their service 20 years down the road and then they go, oh, we're gonna fail over Rutland because Henry Woods burned down. Um, and then Fine, they, they let their <laughs> servers just kind of rot in the basement. Um, so actually, as I was having this conversation with you guys, I just thought about the other option is to look at um, a vendor model through the regional agreement, but that would require an RFP. Um, couldn't be over the 50,000. Here's one, one last quick question, if I can. <laughs> would, would the vendor model allow, if, if we kept a vendor model, um, would it allow for each of the towns to, to to allocate more time? You know, would we have to pay the IT and allocate the expenses, or or could each each town dial up their their use, or, or dial it back on their own with, with without us 
you know, having having to have the funds come through us and you know what I'm saying? We, if we're doing IT, we pay. And so it's almost like our expense budget. Like right now, we have our own expense budget. They mm -hmm. have their own expense, but we share the salary. Is that kind of what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is, if 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 we did a, if we <coughs> reset the model pretty much as it is right now, everybody are, has their pre-allocated times. In a vendor in a vendor situation where he may have four or five or six people working in, in different shifts. Um, could somebody increase their hours without, in other words, could our, could our model cover a certain set amount of hours? And could each town request extra services and build separately outside of our agreement? No. Current, current, okay, current agreement? Oh, no, if we redo the agreement. Oh. Could, could, oh, we do, could we do it in yeah, a manner? The current so, agreement doesn't allow for that. That's what, that's I what I'm saying. saying. Could we do it in a manner that we're all going to get a set number of hours, perhaps less than the ones we're doing now, mm -hmm. and then each town could set up their own vendor agreement for an increase in services beyond that. So we kind of set a minimum, like the mm -hmm. water sewer bill, you have a minimum usage bill. Mm -hmm. And if you go beyond that, you get billed from IT, not through us, so we don't have to handle that and play that game. I, I'm not sure you can do it by percentage, though, because that, that could vary from month to month, like project mm -hmm. to project. No, and I, I don't mean by percentage. I mean, we would well, all have a set. Well, I'm saying is right now we all have 33, 33, 33. We all have a, a mm -hmm. fixed percentage now that we pay for and pay by. We can establish a fixed cost to have, let, let's say Adam's going to, okay, I'm going to give Barry 10, I'm going to give Rutland 10, I'm going to give Dispatch 10. For those 30 hours, this is my fee, and we have the benefits and everything else figured in, and everyone pays their portion. Our agreement can be written such that if you wish to utilize the company you have the right to on your own agreement outside of it. You get so many hours from our agreement, period. The cost is fixed, everyone can budget, and everyone can set this low enough so they can afford it. Well, it seems like that's what Rutland's doing now. That's what they're basically, yeah. they're but going we'd have to just rewrite our agreement to, to keep the agreement alive. We could rewrite the agreement, dial back those, those hours, and then each town can seek their own you know, vendor model for pricing for hours, callbacks, whatever the services they want to get right. beyond beyond their allocated, they get at them for 10 hours. Do what you want with your 10 hours. If you want services outside, outside that, you, you seek your own vendor. That it's would keep our agreement would, alive. So uh, I guess it could kind of be seen that way now. It's just that the money It doesn't not, work for Rutland's cost-saving effort. The money is not there when the school comes and dumps a $700,000 increase on the town mm -hmm. um, and they have to squeeze because so because I want to do the best I can with mm -hmm. the towns so one of the issues I faced with Rutland is I faced a $3,500 cut to a total of 44000 in IT spending I do 28000 that goes to my salary so there's just over 15000 um, for all the IT expenses for the town. That's the internet bill. Mm -hmm. That's the email licensing. Mm -hmm. So there's email bill and email li and licensing mm -hmm. is about $7,000 right there. So now I'm left with $7,000 to purchase hardware. I would have really liked to be able to say, let's dial back the cost because I understand that spending less on hardware and software increases the labor needed. It's, it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. You really should be spending 50-50. So in that case, and that was another thing that drove me to this conclusion, was um, in that case, I would have, as a vendor, I would have said, all right, Rutland, let's cut this back. Maybe we'll bump up your uh, target response times down from um, 30 minutes for a critical issue up to 60 minutes for a critical issue um, and kind of rework it so it makes sense um, why the pricing was adjusted. Um, but that way, they're still getting the level of service they need, and then they're also still able to actually spend money on hardware. Because otherwise, I'm going to be repairing like it happened, and that—that that was the other issue. Dispatch is spending twenty-seven thousand dollars on labor, and then about a thousand dollars on hardware. Oh, so I have, so I have in dispatch, I have a um, monitor computer that went that was ten years old, but there was no money to replace it. There's um, something else for us to consider. So they're spending labor. Is, is Rutland going to be financially viable to stay in an agreement with us without harming us? Are we better off to consider leaving the agreement 
in keeping ourselves afloat. If if they're gonna put a thousand dollars in hardware, that's that's not gonna be enough. That is this is this agreement gonna be beneficial to us to stay in? And, that, and that's that's why again I'm saying let's hit the reset because I don't think it's in the best interest of either entity. Dispatch is spending way too much on labor. Rutland's not spending enough on labor. Barry, honestly, I think Barry is in the best position out of all the towns. You guys, now you're just kissing up. No, <laughs> no, we spent we spent into I our guess. infrastructure in the past five mm -hmm. years. Right. You guys heavily. I put, I put so five I'll, I'll years. say again. Does that make sense? If we if we cut back on your your expense to the three three portions, if we cut back on that in the agreement, so that we maintain, we'd have to know from you and have help from you in this guidance in this to reset the model, so that we can all afford it for sure and be allowed to kind of go a la carte for what we want to do. Well, without forcing them along. Well, I think words, that's the vendor option. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. Yes and yeah. no. Um, we need this agreement to survive. We've, we've gone a year down the road with significant investment into this hardware. Um, and without going back to having our own redundant server, we need the agreement to, to live, the model to live in some way. And I think the vendor agreement doesn't necessarily keep that model alive. But if the vendor agreement is the model lives in a smaller form enough to ensure that we all have backup and maybe that's all it's for for us and then we can get the level of service we want vendor wise mm -hmm. if, if yeah. you know if we wanted if we said okay we're gonna put new new workstations in, in every office and they're gonna have you know I, I don't I don't even know where to go with that, but I mean we're going yeah. to, there, you wanted there, to talk techie right there. I know. Yeah, no. not gonna happen. But I mean if we wanted to increase our service end and we wanted to spend if we if we got a grant and we wanted to dump fifty thousand dollars in infrastructure in the model, we can't unless they're all gonna spend it too. Mm -hmm. So we need to rewrite the model so that we can do more on our own. Or less if we don't have the money. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So Scale while back. we um see what the the bid um for vendor services looked like, like yeah, how it read. Yeah, that's what I was yep. thinking. And then um, you guys can discuss it at your next meeting. Yeah. Um, just so you know. I'm just saying, like, because. Yeah, I'm just trying to get all the thoughts yeah, out Yeah, I here. think if you look at like maybe I said, what we the. the that's down, down the road. Right. Well, well, we're what I'm really asking again. we do tonight keep is Adam decide, on. do we want to keep Adam for another month? Is he willing to do it? so we can work this in a timely fashion because right now, don't get me wrong, it went from three weeks, we're down to two weeks. You yeah, know, course, and, and we've got to make a decision. We don't have a so, bid spec set. We don't have a town administrator familiar with the procurement process to write the, you know, nothing against you, Phil, I'm just saying. A month enough. We're in that situation. It's not like we have Heather that would just cut out a bid spec, Is one month post enough? it, or cut out a job description and post and that for replacing the IT director really the while we wait to make a decision. Because right now we're waiting to figure out what to even post. Yeah. Why don't you write so us we're not a, in a good spot. Yeah. Why don't you write us a, I don't know what you call it, but a proposal. Now there's okay, other. So I have, so I, I have a form that I have to fill out. Yeah. And it will be a RF, I can give you an RFQ. Okay. Uh, a request for quotes. Um, and what I would, recommend is that both towns go out and do a request for quotes and then mm -hmm. sit down and look at the quotes and see if they make sense yeah and in that okay. time we're probably looking at a week to have it written up and uh, it, that it, could it, probably be done in less time than a week it'll yeah, take sure. a week but, to but post still, it at least a week or two of posting to it we're, we're, so we're gonna be looking saying. we're so gonna be that's what i'm saying over the months enough because we're gonna this process will take us a couple of yep. weeks to get our quotes back right. and be ready to look at it. So, so is, is it possible to talk into two months? And <laughs> you don't know, I know, I know what portion, I know it's going to be tough on you, but maybe, well, I can't say anything else. I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not objectionable to, to trying to come up with something if. Adam, would you be willing to stay on for like another month? We'll put the quote out, see where that comes can back. Can we start the help? Hmm. And then. Yeah. Now the regional agreement. There used to be a section just 
kind of comparable. The State Department of Education made the school district take it out. Why? I don't know. It just they know more, I guess, than the rest of us. But we had it very, it was a very, very simple section in the regional contract that it said if there are certain standards by the contract that all five towns have to adhere to and they have to meet certain minimum thing expenditures, if they want more, then it's within their purview as a town to do that, but they're going to pay for it. Exactly. And that's, I think, what we're talking. And that, that in, in a nutshell, was the Which whole we need to know from you what the minimum standard is we need yeah. to keep I mean, I think we have to, alive. We're, we're pretty well bought in with Rutland because of the distance. So. Right, agree. wrong, or indifferent. But that, a, that, that seems like a clear way to go. But what do we need for a minimum standard to set? Yeah. The, and, well, and what do we need for to, con, to, for, to yeah. put out for requests? For yeah, because we have one town that was constantly wanting to spend more, and ironically, it's a town that wants to spend the least now. But anyway, that's how time moves, I guess, in this world. <laughs> but, Shall I make a suggestion? Sure. I mean, I'm not a selectman. I'm not a right. journeyman selectman. But what I'm hearing here, you're the IT guy, and you want to go out on your own. I'm already out on my own, and I just think it's the best option for the town for both uh, cost and. Um, for what the town is facing now, you're going to find somebody else, right? Yep. You're going to find so well, three not weeks to something. do it. Three weeks to do it. So the next time you get, you're looking for something like this or anything for the town, why don't you draw up a contract where it's okay if you're going to give your resignation. You got to give us at least a month and a half, or whatever is. Yeah. Right. You know, you guys are comfortable with the next time you do this contract, whereas someone won't be able to say, right. "Hey, I'm leaving in three weeks." Well, we have town personnel stuff, Bruce, that handles that, but this is a little different because. You know, we're not really the lead town on this. Rutland is the lead. Well, you no, more, the lead that's town so you'll have to make the agreement with the yeah, other. Yeah, I know. Towns. I know that, but that that's the problem. I, 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 think, we have I think we're I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we're if, just if about done. Yeah. Down for a while and, and help you're us willing to the, um, find terms to get through another month. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what I what I would propose then is how will we look at and this way this way here I can propose the same exact terms to um, Rutland and dispatch. Uh, that we take 13.3 percent of whatever I was paid, mm -hmm. and that comes from Barry. If Rutland wants to continue with me, because um, I know they already sent out an RFQ, um, if Rutland wants to continue with me, they have the same option of paying 13.3 percent, um, and then dispatch the same thing um, until we can fine tune the uh, path for both okay. both agreements. Um, so what happened is my leave date for the full position would still be um, June 30th. And then what would happen is I would um, I would get paid from Barry 13.3% that Barry has been paying all along. Um, and then Rutland have the option to do the same thing. But that mm -hmm. way there is simplifies the billing process going into July 1st or FY18. Gotcha. Um, so you're still resigning, but we can retain you as for our town for a month, <laughs> and they will have the option to do the same. So, that's, do you want me to write something up for that sounds, yes, two months? That sounds very wise. How long do you guys want? A month or two months? One month. One month. Really? That's all we need. We we'll make it really. Could, yeah, we just need to develop a plan. That's, make, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I appreciate it, but the, well, Adam month. also wants to move forward. It can be month to month. So yeah. we can just say one month, and then it can run. All right, fair enough. Like yeah, with an option, kind of like a baseball contract. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just worried at the end of the month. I know. Time. I think at the end of the month. Time. Gene or Nancy will get crap that. Another week. What's his monthly pay, and just time what's 13 percent of that? And that's <laughs> he's what he's recommending. The okay. You guys have to agree to it, though. So I'm wondering if he can get that for tomorrow night, because if not, I don't know when you guys meet again. Well, we're gonna have that settled by the end. Sixty-two divided by twelve. What comes to? Yes. Divide it by four. Oh, we'll have that. So, <laughs> I'll get the math figured out. Tomorrow. I'll get something written up. If you could. For a July 1 to the end of July, and then say that it's... See, we actually have to the end of June for that. <laughs> we gotta get it, we got to do something on the... Okay. On the yeah, okay. Um, and then I would recommend that you still do the RFQ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which I'll write one up. Appreciate it. Um, I just have to submit 
the form to you guys because you guys are the ones that appointed me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, you have to accept that. Um, so you guys just have to accept financial disclosure. The, the financial disclosure. Um, if you want to solicit me for quotes, you don't have to solicit me for quotes. Okay. Uh, but if okay. you, I think if just you, you don't have to be identified as a special employee for that to occur. I'm not sure. I have a whole email from FX. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through. I'll go through that one more time. I can send that along to you guys too. Um, but they they outlined everything that I would need to do, and they said that since there is no lapse in my employment per se with the town, um, that it bypasses a lot of the uh, cons the ethics concerns. You've got a private contractor. The town takes on less responsibility, and you yeah. got like take on more. yeah. Yes, it's a little, right. a little different under okay. the law. Yeah, just keep me posted if you right. can have that for tomorrow. Just yep. send me a message <laughs> and then, well, because we're meeting tomorrow night. Yep. So. Yeah, that'll okay. Be okay. Keep, keep I, thing. Okay. I'm what happy with that. Okay. I still you think we just, okay. Do you, you want to well, he's still yeah, employed to the June. We just need a bigger is. number on that line item, no matter what number he gives us. We're in a transition. It, it always is. happens that way. It already way. is bigger. You guys added 15000 on top of... You know, I pulled it back to the 40000 thousand because I took Rutland's number out. So that includes our... But we don't have to have the Rutland's salary number in because what, what he's proposing is... is yeah, what he's proposing... No, what yeah. he's proposing is... That's what I was asking. Yeah. So oh, right. that's, we're, that's we're covered. We're well, what like he's proposing is the director position's empty, so all the time, what, 20 all three sections run our <laughs> portion originally. So, yeah, so if the salary, the salary line was pulled back to 40000 uh, you guys were spending 27000 That's what I'm saying is yeah. Barry is investing into IT at a faster rate... Seventy seventy three five would be our total for IT. Mm -hmm. That's what we have in our budget for mm -hmm. tomorrow. I night. think we can hire him for a month. Um, so you <laughs> safely out of that budget. Four. You're already. Yeah. That's all. I'm, that's all I was really yeah. trying to get is make sure right. that that's. And, the and case. we don't have to worry about their portion because he's he's done June thirtieth officially. So no. the direct. And my we have to communicate more, that to Rutland though. That my concern with that more was. We don't know where Rutland stands with what they're going to contribute to an agreement they're saying they're not ready to walk away from. That number is completely dependent on not having any income or expense related to Rutland or RECC, which is not in line with the agreement or what they recently mm -hmm. stated in the email. So what level of commitment do they still want to make and is it going to have any monetary value? We don't know. It has to have monetary so value. So that's why... I, Maybe the 15000 is enough to cover that potential we don't know. Yeah. Or maybe we're still in deep water and we've got a whole year before we can cut our budget like that. Well, the good thing so is that was what I'm saying. You it can seemed, always revisit this at a uh, special town meeting. Yes, yeah. we can revisit it. Um, I'm, well, yes, I'm happy but I was just, uh, right, that's we, why I was asking well, the question. We need to that's discuss that with Rutland and these issues that we won't settle we'll tonight. But to keep them on for a month without keeping the director spot filled is good. That takes care of us, and we don't have to worry about their portions or anything. Mm -hmm. Right. As he said, the math would be a pain. We don't need the math. He's a great suggestion. And they can both continue if they want, and, and then that gives us a month to work this out and figure out the agreement. Yeah, I think we okay. might be able Thank to work you. out with I think them. that's a, a great budget, solution. The Rutland, you know, follow it in the news, the Rutland budget usually aren't settled at the end of the fiscal year with the Wachusa situation and stuff, so I think it's going to be... We'll go into December. What? We'll <laughs> yeah. go into December. Yeah, they'll go to December. So. Oh, like they All right. Last year, we're all, all set with Adam for school yep, budget issues. Thank okay. you, Adam. Thank you yeah. very much. Are sure you going to be at the town meeting? Business? Okay, thank you. Okay. I do appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. No appreciate problem. Very much. Nick. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thanks, Ed. It's okay. Hopefully in the best interest of... Yep. I believe it. I absolutely believe it is. Exactly. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. saying that the short notice is what's making us panic, so I appreciate the extension. All right. Thank okay. Thanks, Adam. I think we can deal with big groups out of line. I think you had some questions for us. I did. Um, it was like, well, you know I told you my wife had a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. I think be careful about you. We're on television and everything. Yeah, we're on live too. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> get into the person. <laughs> the thing looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a couple more right. actors. Well, anyways. Anyway. So I am here. She was supposed to be here. Her boss mm -hmm. asked her to be here. Um, and it's something to do with 
bringing marijuana into the town, like every town or mm -hmm. every city, someone wants to bring a facility in. Mm -hmm. Is that what's going on in this town? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I'll explain. And medical. It. Yeah. And We've, was there going to be a board on that? We buy the board. The, it's a little confusing, like everything else in this right. world. The, it doesn't go through the conventional town meeting vote. The state actually has to approve it. At this point, what the town was requested, and through the Board of Selectmen, and which we did, they needed a letter of, quote, non-opposition from the Board of Selectmen before they could go to the State Department of Public Health for approval. And the board has taken that action. This is on the medicinal marijuana only. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's at. It has gone to... The well, it hasn't really gone anywhere yet. Well, it's, gone, it's done with the town. It's done it's, with the town. It's at the state. They've chosen the site. It's down off of Vernon Avenue in South Barry. And that part is all... I guess all settled, however they do it. But from the this board's perspective at this point, we are done with the issue. We sent it on to the state. The Department of Public Health has to go through the approval process, and at some so point, I they guess I was here to say that the like, Mary Health Center is against it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but they didn't. Interestingly enough, as I recall, they did not articulate that. Okay. To, they, well, I'm a little late. What, that they're against it? Yeah. Yeah, yes. well, they didn't, they can tell us, yeah, we're done with the issue. This went on for a couple months, but they didn't, they never told the town that. Right. I don't think we have anything in writing from the health center. I think it started before the town in February. Yeah, it we, went on we for only four resolved five, it. Went on for about, about three four weeks, months. Four weeks but, ago, three weeks ago. But the health center, you know, they can say what they want at this point. And it's like everything else at UMass Memorial. Maybe it didn't get up their bureaucracy, but if they were... They didn't know. Well, they knew. And I will yeah. tell you, it was all the legal things were done. And if they didn't know at the health center, then that was their fault, not our fault. All right. Yeah. And I don't know who I you dealt with that. down there. Don't, you know, this is, you know... Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. What so we've approved is a grow facility. They will grow. They may not have, as they call, window sales. People can't go there. They can't sell off site, but they can sell it. They can sell it to licensed people. They can sell it to licensed right. facilities. Nobody will come here to purchase it. Um, yeah. They're going to um, offer um, property taxes, agree to pay property taxes, give the town some revenue. Um, in the town, I believe we have on the article. Don't we have a moratorium on the article <coughs> for recreational for recreational marijuana? So w the town is putting up for a vote to to halt any issues for recreational marijuana to give the town and this board a chance to create bylaws to see what happens with the state when they come out with. We're expecting so in August. Actually, what you're saying is kind of up to the state. This, yes, yes the, it is. the medical they give great, great leeway to. Once the state gives them a license, we have very little we can do or impose on it. Okay. So we need to look forward to if they have concerns, um, pay attention. Bylaws need to be generated prior to, I think, December when the moratorium will run out, and then people can start requesting permits for recreation. The Board of Health can right. still provide some bylaws on mm -hmm. actual medical marijuana oh, side as well. So, so, so to recently. right. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. if we want red tape here, we have to create it. Otherwise, there's nothing in our books to stop anything. Yeah, okay. we don't have anything, and they haven't developed the regs on the recreation. But on the medicinal one, they have, the state has, and the proposal that was for Barry is on its way through the State Department of Public Health, and whatever they do with the thing. But we uh, believe it will have very little impact on the town. It should, it, it should be a it should be a private facility, quietly staffed, and they should note really we don't anticipate any impact on the town and surroundings. Okay. All right. All righty. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, thank you. Hey, have a good night. Yeah, have a good night. It's good to meet Take you. Take care. Okay. We have two sets of minutes to approve.
for Wednesday, April 26th at 6.30 and one for 7 p.m. Are the wishes of the board. I would make a motion to approve both sets of minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can only approve one. One is uh, for the selectmen's meeting prior to the finance committee, and the second one was the notes at the finance committee. That might be something you have to throw to them later to accept. Mm. It's the finance committee meeting notes. It's titled finance committee. Can I see those? I mean, it's like you normally do. Phil did like we normally do. When the select board attends a finance committee meeting, the notes just kind of say attended the finance committee meeting. So, those do, are minutes for the board. Of select didn't, board. didn't we have a meeting prior to that, though? That's what there's That's two what sets of minutes one from a oh, meeting from the you had same. prior and a meeting. Oh. Yes, there were two oh. meetings. There were two meetings. Right. Yeah. Was it two meetings? Do we continue our meeting for that? Make two meetings. This is not. We can just. Members present are only finance committee meeting. These are finance committee meeting minutes. Not for us to sign, is all I'm saying, or approve. I didn't do the meeting minutes. And I was not at these meetings, so I don't know. <laughs> I am telling you, that's ours. Okay. okay. Please hold this and present it to the finance committee. Do you disagree, Phil? No, I don't. Thank you. you want to propose okay. a motion then, Matt? All right. So we'll add I the propose a motion to accept the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes for Wednesday, April 26th. At 6 30. Yes. Second okay. motion. Do I have the second? I do. Second. The Hearing no discussion, call for a vote. Favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Apologize. It was. I understood it was confusing, but I think we're good. Okay. Let's see if we can get things wrapped up here. Uh, do you need that signed fair? Greg's to do the eventually you'll have to sign hers. The, yes. Okay. Then we have the uh, selectmen's reports. Do the gentlemen have anything you wish to? In one moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. We have information on the free cash, correct? We do. Do you want to read off what it is? And I might have left that upstairs. What? I left that upstairs. Oh, you did? Jean didn't want to do it? No, I asked Jean and she. Good, after all. She, she had an appointment today. No, oh, okay. After all, she went through, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can go on. I can, I can grab it. Okay. Just a second, if you guys want to. Reports. I did talk with um, on our basketball issue with following okay. um, the phone conversation so far. Um, I'm obviously, up. we've nice. we've gotten her point uh, somewhat, but much more extremely in the phone conversation. How I'm how, sure you did. how aggravated she is um, <laughs> with the basketball. But the, the best I can tell so far is they are staying within their property, standing in the street. Um, it appears that obviously the police have gone down and, and saw fit to join in with the children playing basketball. Um, she wasn't too pleased with that. Um, I believe what they what they had said. I didn't check with the officers. Was that they have no bylaw they can enforce? She indicated to me that there was a bylaw in the books, um, and through further discussion, it seems that there's a bylaw from the 1800s referring to playing ball on the common. And um, I'm pulling I, out your copy of the 1800s bylaw. No, well, I, 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 had, I, was I, I, I just had to have a little joke. I, 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 ex I expressed <laughs> I to her that my, her my concern would be, <laughs> my concern was that a bylaw from the 1800s was probably not referring to basketball. I don't believe it was in, in existence then. And um, furthermore, it probably wasn't specifically meant to address portable basketball hoops. So we'd have a hard time interpreting that law um, to mean somebody can't have a basketball hoop or play basketball in the I street. I think that was only referring to uh, the ball playing, was only referring to the center of Barry. Right. It seemed, it seemed back oh, then it was, gotcha. it was referring to ball playing. And back then it was probably baseball or something, or stickball. Up in the car. Probably the same issue they talked about. People getting right. So, so I, I don't think there's going to be any recourse there. I still want to go down and talk to the neighbors and see if, if, if okay. they would willingly um, 
you know, move it some. Because apparently, in, in, in my concern for her, for her behalf here, is it's, it's not just that those people that live in that residence are playing. They've invited the neighborhood all around to come use it whenever okay. they wish. And I think that's going a little beyond... Right, you know, putting up in the neighbors playing basketball once in a while. If they've opened the hoop up to the whole town, um, I think that's a little in your face. Um, it sounds like it, and she's certainly taken it that way. So I do want to yeah, go talk I to guess them. That might be the case. I want to go talk to them and okay. see if that if that's it. I do have an exception to it. If if they're opening it up to bring people there all the time, and um, I can't know if they're really you know trying to make extra noise to aggravate it because they know what they're doing. So she feels they are. Um, certainly can't know that. Right. But um, if it's if it's just your neighbors are playing hoop out there in the street, I'd say tough it up. But it, it sounds like they're saying, oh, we're just going to make this. Uh, it's not. We have public basketball courts. Um, and if it's for anyone to come use and the owners aren't home at all, it's, it's a little different than just to pick up game in yeah. the street. And um, I, I think she's got a legitimate issue she's upset with. And as we talked about a dog being a public nuisance, I think something does rise to the threshold of being a nuisance. Mm -hmm. And they may be pushing that envelope. So yeah, I'll put, I think I, I'd want to talk to them first and see what's going on mm -hmm. and see how many people are using it. And I, would, I still was thinking, I mentioned it to Phil today in back of the hotel, you know, where the uh, Barry Housing Authority owns or even at the edge of their parking lot. I think we, <coughs> a compromise here might be to contact the housing authority and ask them if they could work with us on something else. Right. And we, that would be the compromise. Certainly if somebody wants to have a basketball hoop in their own property and play yeah, property that's their business. And, and play hoop in front of it, I, that's, I'm never going to say they can't do that. I'm, right. That's not going to change that aspect of it. But, but, if, it's be, but if it's becoming literally a community hoop and, they, and, they, and they're kind of advertising that way to the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. then no, then we need a community hoop for that. But there is high plains. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into private property or getting permission to private property or towing cars off people's properties, as was suggested. Um, right. But, you know, High Plains is there. And yes. if, we, if we could make a hoop, obviously, if they don't want it in Ornate Park, they don't want it in Ornate Park. And I, I'd got to defer to the people that manage that park at that point. Um, you know, if they manage and maintain it, you're not going to say, well, tough, you're stuck with this. I don't think that's right to them either for their wishes or the use down there. Um, that's why we have these parks and recs, mm -hmm. um, volunteers and commissions that take care of those at, at their level um, and they're part of the community. Um, so I'm not against, a, as we said before, okay. a hoop. And if this is becoming a public court, I don't think, you know, I, I think that is being a, yeah. a nuisance if it's a public court. And I would, um, you know, I'm all for kids playing basketball, and I told her that several times. But she's got a very valid point if it's just everybody coming there to play. That's, mm -hmm. She owns that property. She does not a tenant there. Right. Um, and I explained that the tenants have just as much right to enjoy their property as she does for the one she owns because they pay their money for it. They just don't get to own it. Um, but it's different if other people are coming up and doing this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're at with it. I don't know if that gives you guys any different okay. perspective on it, but I like that was my thoughts. Uh, I was down there uh, last week and made a visit in the neighborhood. And I was thinking perhaps we could do something at the end of Nelson Street because I thought that was a, a public way at the end, but it's not. It's, it belongs to uh, some residential units mm -hmm. there, so I don't think that's available. Um, I was down there this afternoon, and I was looking at the end of Church Street and wondering if, if that might be possible to put some sort of portable hoop there. I don't know if that would cause problems or not. It might dissipate some of the the volume of, of activity where the current hoop is, and share yeah, it with, have to take a share look it with this one. other hoop. I don't know, and I still have to take a look at the assessor's map to see whether that's actually town property yeah, on the street. That's, that's going to be. I don't want to get into any private property so permission or not. It, it's a ticklish situation trying to balance, you know, people's yes. right to uh, or desire to, to do some recreational activities with, you know, versus the desire for peace and tranquility where you live. Mm -hmm. I don't think a basketball game yeah. at 3 to 4 o'clock is bad, but if it's all the kids um, coming up and going kid after kid after I've kid all day long, that's actually a meeting with uh, the resident and the police chief and uh, Dennis Fleming of the Recreation Committee on Thursday to talk about the issue as well. Excellent. Excellent. And, as well as with the and I, yeah, I don't think, and I wanted to talk to our chief, I, I think it, it seemed to me that when the officers went down, our intent was sort of have them check it out and see what's going on. 
they seem to jump right in and take a side in the issue, which yeah. which which makes our j task a little more difficult. Um, so maybe we need to personally talk to the chief and explain yep. what our situation is there. Um, oh. Okay. I just don't know if that's necessarily fair to the police officers. They went there and the, cho the side they chose is the side they thought was right based on the bylaws in place and the rules and the regs that they can enforce. So I hear you, but I think it, the way it may be heard, the way you presented it, was they went down there to just go play with the kids. No, 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 no. So but <laughs> I don't want to, I, I, I got you. I, I just don't was, think they know what we were looking for. We kind of wanted to go down and check it out and see what's going on, not necessarily get that involved in it. Um, but, you know, you can't tell them how to, how to police. Yeah. Um, my, you know, my concern is, like we said, it, it might be up to us to declare a nuisance if it is. If, if they're bringing 20, 30 kids, I don't know how many kids are going there yet. And I don't know how far around they're coming from to play basketball there. But this isn't, this isn't. I thought it was just a couple of kids yeah. that were just shooting. This isn't, this isn't come out over my house. We've got a gymnasium out back. We can play hoop whatever yeah. you want. This is, this is in the public way, yeah. not in front of their own homes. Um, and it seems the more she's been upset. Yeah. I don't know. But what she would claim is the more it's upset her and she's gotten irritated with it and said something, the more they've picked up the pace. Um, that would certainly not be what I would think of my tradition let some kids go play basketball in front of the house. It also might line up with the better weather. With what? The better weather. Yes. Well, I'm anyway. just, I mean, it might I, be a coincidence that we, the weather has slowly gotten better over the last month or so, and so it may kind of make it appear a I, lot I worse than it is. Your, it's not the intent of the kids, it's just, I advise we I'm just throwing it out there. We I, do have quiet hours, and when I was talking with her on, on the phone, I asked, well, are they playing basketball now? She said, well, I don't know, I'm in the house and the windows are closed. So when she is indoors, if her front windows are closed, she really doesn't hear it. It's really if her front windows are open or if she's outside. So it's, it's not like she can't escape the noise, but once again, she shouldn't have to escape the noise yeah. in her own home. Um, I got within reason. And, and there's, and I don't mean. We knew to, it was going to be a touchy issue when it came. I'm up. not trying to necessarily defend the kids in playing. I recognize two sides of this. No, yeah, so absolutely. So I'm not trying to say that she doesn't have a point. So please. No, no. I, I know I haven't said a lot like she does. So I needed to make sure she understands. I, no, I am no. trying to pay attention to where she's coming from. Okay. Well, we think we figure out on it. Well, we'll, we'll see where we can go. I, I'm, I'll still go down and talk to eleven. That's what the selectmen get the big bucks. Oh for. yeah, that's that's what that <laughs> stipend amount we get. For. Oh, we zeroed that, didn't we? What? <laughs> we zeroed that, didn't we? You yes, sure you did. did. <laughs> Silly us. I know. That's all right. Anything else? Okay, Matt. Uh, not a lot to be said here. No. Okay. My thing I had been working on is already another agenda item. Okay. Okay, now you have the free cap. I do now. Okay. I did. Um, okay, so first I would like to thank Jean. Joel, our accountant, uh, Nancy Talbot, um, Jean for her work uh, getting our Schedule A submitted um, like she promised us she would. Uh, so we have some very good news that came in uh, late last week. Um, so the general fund, which is the town's free cash, came in at 658216 Six what? Six, six five eight one two. I'm sorry, six five eight two one six. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, the closeout for the enterprise fund with the sewer, um, because sewer closes out similar to how we do our books. They closed out at one two two six seven three. And the water enterprise closed out at one five seven one eight four. Um, another. So what was the free cash final number? Six five eight. Okay, that's what it's two one six. Um, some other good news. Um, I guess I would like to thank Quabin um, after our yes. meeting. They came in. Uh, we told them that we were hoping for them to come down to four percent, which would help us. Of course, that was before we had any idea our free cash would be where it is. Um, and they came back. They had a meeting. Um, I'm not sure what day last week as well. And they agreed um, to 
exceed our request actually and they came down to a 3.16 percent increase for us and that number um, brings us to our assessment of five million two eight eight six one two okay And the line item was 5390, which five, they. Three, the, three, no, nine, what they originally put it up was 5390 something, their original. Mm -hmm. 390 something. Do you know what it was? Um, it might have. Does it here or is it not? It should be there. Uh, the, the number that's highlighted is a 4%. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't have the original number on here. I think it was 5 5 something. Okay, and when's I think it was five three ninety. When uh, that five, uh, section five, of the article five, comes five. comes up for discussion, and I do want to make sure that we extend our appreciation mm -hmm. to the school committee, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, for their help on this. And I know they had some other towns, I guess, that are. Need help too, yeah. Need help badly, yep. but uh, that's their issue. But uh, just that, you know, I thought that we had a very positive meeting that evening. Yeah, I, agree. I think it uh, was a very straightforward and honest meeting where everybody got along. Yeah, yeah. I know. I asked them for two point two four two percent, and I thought that was a dream. But um, they came pretty close. That yeah. was um, yeah, yeah, they did. I suggested if they could get that low, it'd yeah, be and I, helpful. I, and they I think we want to make sure of that. And I'm going to. Uh, and I think. I think what we'll see is um, some of the capital items that they took off yeah. will come back. Well, I'm the, sure they're the, going to. In the special town meeting. Which, I'm sure things, things mm -hmm. are going to have to come. Well, they can't come back for an increase. They can only go well, down. That, that right. being said, um, well, what, it, it we can up. do ruggles, right, if mm -hmm. we wanted to on special yes. town. We can do certain things, yeah. So I'm just saying something we can consider depending but on how this all lays out. We but, yeah, still a lot it, to get but, through. But my, my bigger concern still is... Um, this this is fantastic news on both sides, but to truly do our job here, um, if, if this were our personal income, I would say that um, if if the revenues was my income of ten million two hundred forty six thousand dollars, I would strike a portion of that aside and put it in stabilization, which would be my savings, and I would live off the rest. We're going beyond that and dipping into either free cash. In this case, we have the free cash now, but dipping into free cash. Free cash is those other leftover funds that should go into our savings. And that's what, what, when, yep. when, when we have to dip into free cash to balance our budget, we're not living within our levy limits, our total revenues. And I think that really needs to be what we, that this would change. If you look at our line items in the last few years, we keep taking money out of free cash. If that stopped, if we could have this budget stay within the revenue limits, like any of us would do on our income, we would, we would successfully build stabilization back and, and be financially stable and strong. And then we could take special requests when they come in. We could buy equipment we need. We could update roads. We could, we could look into a lot more without necessarily always borrowing. But um, this is fantastic, and this is a great change in what this budget has done in, in history. But the fact that we still have to go into free cash, I don't care if free cash at two million or zero, our budget doesn't balance if we can't stay within that ten million two forty six. Mm -hmm. We're still not a balanced budget. We're still relying on previous funds and savings to balance this, and that's not going to let this town survive and thrive if we have to right. keep dipping into credit or savings. You know, if you were putting aside for your kid's college fund and you went and stole from that every couple of years till the college fund was empty. You'd have nothing down the road. Right. We, we've 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 still got to get within our means here. Um, in the future, this is this is a that, great that change for this year. OPEP fund is very similar to stabilization and the fact that it's not meant to be used for years down the road. Right. And our recommendation from the consultant the treasurer used was twenty five thousand, and we only budgeted five thousand this year because of that. And that's another one that would be good to invest in now because it grows with the interest rate better. Right. And we come back in the fall. For a specific purpose that we're not able to fund right now unless we use right. this type of money to do and, it. And, and I'm fine because that still is a savings. That's still, that's not money we're spending. That's money going into the account it's to preparing build Preparing for the future. Still. Exactly. Right. And that's, so w that's shifting a savings to savings to me. I have no problem that always coming out of free cash. Right. I have no problem with that because that's, that's, 
savings account A or savings account B. Yeah. The bulk of that one part. has to be there for the future. We know that. And we've got to start putting into it. And I, I don't have a problem putting that aside for that. Yeah, the bulk of that free cash is going back into stabilization. Right. Which is fantastic. That's where it's heading. Um, I, I'd like to guess. The, the, the free cash, this number right here, this money has to be spent by June 30th. This right. month. It's going to go into stabilization. Al yeah. Allocated. It has it to be allocated. It yeah. should go to stabilization. Who makes that? And that's where it belongs. Select board. But as far as where's the free cash land by June thirtieth? Who makes the decision? Um, town meeting's got to be article. settled. There's a town meeting article for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we have to figure out what we're going to use to balance the budget, and then the balance of that free cash. Goes well, into stabilization. It's, it's too late to put it into. The um, OP okay. is it too late to put it into OPEB now, or do we have to wait till fall? We're going to we, see how the warrant's written. I don't know how the warrant. Do we written say written a dollar? Oh, you can make a motion on. You can make a motion. On make a motion on okay, it, that's right? what I'm asking. So. Yeah, why, yes. why don't we do that and, and put it in there now? Because that's see to me that that that's our liability coming in the future. We have to start saving for it, and that's that's a great place for free cash to go. It's got to be set aside. I. I'd, I'd rather do it now um, so it doesn't feel like we're taking more out later. Let, let's put the 20000 additional to what yeah. we said five. So we come to put, a, a 25000 base. Right, we, want, we were putting five in. We have to put 20000 20 total. So, so 20 now, of the free cash. All right, so instead of moving five, we're going to make a motion on the floor to move that to 20. No. We're going to do 20, but the budget... The omni whatever budget we have, is that a, a separate article for the That's OPEB? Article. Or is no, it's an article. It's an so article. it's a separate article for OPEB. That's yeah. five thousand. Yes. So we want to make a mo so we want to make a motion on the floor. Keep both of them. Yeah, you can you can make the change right up until no, the what, what, what I'm saying keep is keep both articles. One so would say put article. twenty thousand in it, and one would say put article. five thousand in it. Oh, so we want, that's, that's what I'm asking. So we uh, want to put 25. I, I am confused. I thought you just said there was already an article about free cash and where we would put it. Right. We can make a motion, put a motion to on the floor to say, rather than all stabilization, we're going to put a no. percent into the OPEB account no. that this other article is creating. No, no. you can make a motion to amend, amend the, dollar amount the dollar amount on the article. On the article. You mm -hmm. cannot create new articles. So I'm trying to find out. So on the article for OPEB, mm -hmm. right now it's 5000 Right, but where are the funds coming from? Does it define free it or cash. does it, it could come from anywhere? It's coming from free cash right now. The $5,000 for that currently is coming from free cash. Hmm. As are another $100,000. Then we just change that to 25000 on that article. Yeah, That's what I was asking. So we want to make it 25 to not to Right. You allow, the, okay. you allow the motion to be entered onto the floor. And then you make an amendment to that. Make a motion to, to amend. And when amend. people ask why, it's because this is what yeah. the design was, but we didn't right. have the money. Now that free cash has been certified, we can put the appropriate amount in that we're supposed to be depositing this year. I just want to make sure we do it in the right order. My understanding was it's like you do one before you can do the rest or something, and that's all I was trying to clarify. No, so it's the right, right. right. It's the right order. And we also have a motion, an article that's going to say move a sum of money from free cash to stabilization. That sum of money will be determined by what we have left over. Well, that was my confusion. Can we actually fund OPEB from free cash, or do we fund OPEB from stabilization? We throw all that. No, no. stabilization. And that's where I was confused. We need two thirds vote. Two thirds, yeah. Two thirds vote to okay. go in, two thirds It'll vote be to go out. So it's easier to, and then you have your last article, which is stabilization, right. whatever amount is left. Right. That's what you don't have to put it in. Yeah, this bitch. Okay. Because if we put it in stabilization, Thanks. we want to take yeah. it out later. That's a two thirds vote on the floor to get it taken out. Right. It, to it, move it. But much move easier down. to deal it with it article by article like that than it is. Otherwise, you, know, you don't want to have three or four different numbers floating around on the floor, which we have had in the past, which makes life interesting. But, you know, we're going to have I apologize my, for my confusion. The difficult part here will be explaining fine. what we are trying to do. Of each line item. I just saw what the article so is I for. Apologize. That'll be more difficult. Yeah. And somebody will ask what the letters stand for, See, if, right? If, if I'm right, we're still going to be moving 106931 from free cash to balance our budget. Roughly. That's taking the school number off what our last number was here. But in other words, we're, we're still can taking a hundred thousand dollar hit in free cash, so we're lucky it came in that high, just to balance. But our you budget. have to. You also have to look. I. 
I don't like the free cash is always in as part of the revenues. Well, to you have to look at. I've looked at the. You know, you you look at the budget overall, and free cash should be going to balance certain things. I agree a hundred percent, and I think we have to be very careful that we make use of free cash because if we don't, whatever you expend at this town meeting goes right on your property tax bill. Mm -hmm. Right on it. If you don't use the free cash to offset some of these things, right, right on to the property, every penny. Okay. So it'll like, a, sort of like it, the snow budget. If you, if well, you put no, it in too not big, really. But you put it in too big, you got to pay. It's it it backwards a little there. But if you don't allocate but, it right, but you have to look at the overall budget. Okay, you got your new growth. You've got, and this is where if you use the free cash properly, you don't really get a lot of questions about it. But we're paying payments on roofs and things like this. Mm -hmm. To me, when you have that. Is, yes, it is operating budget, but it is not direct operating, if you want to look at it. Yes. Those are capital things, in a way. So if you're using it, and you're using it correctly within the parameters of the budget that you have, you know, you don't want to chuck it towards, you know, paying for the town accountant or something like that. I, I think we all But, do. yeah, I would also agree. I'd rather, I would rather have less free cash and less debt. I don't believe in um, putting a savings account aside when I'm carrying That's it. right. Yeah. But if you notice. Uh, but, but this is not the case. We can just pay a debt off. But, it, but um, you know. I, one, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But if, if, we, if we take it out of the budget completely, we're going to raise have to raise the levy limit. And, and that's undesirable as well. well yeah. you're not going to raise the levy limit. You're going to. You're yeah, gonna, you're under the levy limit. We're under the levy limit, but you'll reach your capacity. Right. Yeah. I, and, understand, I understand. And but, the, but still, I, I'd still like to try to get. Right. Make sure we put some of that in stabilization. A, a oh, I agree. Portion every I agree. Year. As much as this, this should be, I would think a million two, almost double yeah. where it is. I think, and where, you know, I agree a hundred percent. But I think one of the things that, you know, uh, I know when I was on before, and it appears that when I wasn't on, Barry's always been pretty careful about borrowing. You haven't had to sign any bond anticipation no. notes Not since, yet. You, <laughs> since you've been on the board. And yeah. that's, that's, a, that's and good. What? Yeah. That's good. Barry, you know. But we have a few out there. What? We have a few out well, there. Well, we have a few out there. But at the same time, they're put out in the right manner. And I think at times, you're, you're like any business, you have capital shortfalls and you have to make them up at, at times. But they've always get paid off on time, too. Mm -hmm. And they're set up. And I don't know if you've been through it, but we set up the bonds. And I, I, if somebody asks us at the meeting, I'd be more than happy to explain it. But we set our bonds up in such a way that, you know, if we do a bond anticipation note or, you know, that type of thing, uh, or we put out a bond in anticipation of revenue, we put out like six of them. That way we can pay, if we have enough money, we pay one off, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Without, you know, we can pay much faster if we're in a right. position to pay ahead. It costs a little more up front, but it costs less in the long run. So. Same as credit card debt. If you can get rid of a small credit card and get rid of the interest. Yeah, Take but I mean, I think, get rid of it. I think, you know, like we haven't had to do that. Every so often it has to, things happen, you have to do what you have to do if the state comes through with their money. Okay. But we've been pretty good over the years. Barry? Let's, let's push through that. We're gonna yeah, thank I'm you. ready. I think it's already nine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so... The regional building inspector. Yeah. Oh, one thing on the budget before we move past that. I need the select board to decide right. if you would like to do a 2% COLA for non-union employees or not. That'll increase what we pay out of the free cash towards our budget. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> How many employees aren't on your contract? Uh, a whole bunch. It's about, it's, I would say, to say safely, I didn't do the figures yet, under $30,000 to give every non-union employee a 2% COLA. I think that's reasonable. That includes all uh, firefighters, ambulance. Oh, I can't vote on it. <laughs> uh, ambulance personnel, so it would just... Everybody. Everybody, yep. And if you see the budgets that I emailed you guys, there is a column that includes it, and there's a column without it. Okay. Yeah. Just to prepare that. for if you chose to do that or not, I can delete a column. I'll recuse myself from this issue. When was? 
I happen to favor it. When was the last time we had, did we do a, I can't recall. Yes. We did one last year, okay. 2%. Yes, there was some raise. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's, it's crazy because I know it's 30,000 and I know it's going to upset a lot of people, but part of me is on principle for the last three months we've been crying poor. We're cutting everybody's department by 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. And now we want to throw 30,000 in when we still can't balance the budget within our tax levy. We're still relying on free cash to make that happen, which means I don't think we're getting to the goal of, you know, it's generally stated that free cash is best benefit is towards capital expenses. So you don't have debt because mm -hmm. the debt interest is always greater than your savings interest. So you use it appropriately, a certain portion, pay either pay capital straight out. You don't go into a, a loan or a ban or a bond. We haven't been able to do that for certain things. I think we're riding a tight line right now on our debt versus valuation. And I think, like I said, it sounds more like principle than actually what's 30,000 to 10 million or whatever the overall grand budget is. But it comes back down to that. Well, if everybody asks for every department needs another 5,000, every department needs another I mean, we cut out certain departments that have been desperately crying for assistance for only five or seven thousand dollars to help them keep up with the paperwork and public records issues and getting things electronically versus pulling them out of a hard copy vault somewhere. Um, it's hard for me to say. So I have a hard time supporting that right now, and I know it's not a popular position. But I think for this year, it might be the right position. And then next year, we're in a better spot. Can I just say something? It just doesn't seem yeah. fair, though, to the non-union for union people to get a raise. I've been telling the union oh, people that don't oh, expect oh, a 2%. And the, the non-union not to get anything. Yeah, there was about three years, uh, 2010, 11, 12, that there was no COLA to the non-union, but the union still got their COLA. Well. I think, you know, I've been sitting in negotiations with the police union and one of the items we've been discussing is whether they should be getting a COLA or not. And I've been fighting it. Well, to, they're, they're and getting, I can't... They're getting an increase through the step schedule, aren't they? We are negotiating that. The first thought was it's getting pushed out for a year. It's not going to happen this year. But I can't get into any more because I have another meeting in two days. Yeah. But I'm just saying... I'm keeping the same line I am with the union negotiation as I am representing right now. We can't afford this this well, year. I think topic. with the, the common, the public safety building, all of these major investments we just put in, it's almost like you got to wait a year to actually figure out where you land with all of this debt that's going to show up in next year's budget. There's no debt. We didn't borrow for the public safety building. We used stabilization. Also, I think the DPW is asking for an increase, so I, I, don't, I don't think we'll be made bulk at this, but not having anything at all, so. I mean, now, mind you, Greg, you do not have any requirement to recuse yourself because this affects the I'm, entire I'm population. Not, uh, yeah, but. So for you to. You heard my opinion, um, and that, and, but I'm, I won't vote on a pay of issue for myself of any kind. Understood. I will not. I will you respect consider, your decisions, whatever they are. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that you could consider. You don't want to do two percent, maybe one percent, or mm -hmm. one and a half percent. So. I just know personally that. I mean, I don't know, maybe the Finance Committee can have this fun and go and talk to the department heads. We said you can't have your assistant. Because they cut two departments that requested for assistance and gave another department an assistant. 
but now all of a sudden we have enough money to give everybody raises, but we can't get enough work hours to make up the difference. So you can give them a raise, but they still don't have enough time in the day. It's kind of like Adam's position. There's only one of me. No matter how much you pay me, I can't do it all. But we'll pay more, but we won't provide the extra hours to accomplish the. It's we got to pay attention to that. Is all I'm saying, and it's hard for me to go and stand in front of another department head and say just the opposite of that. Well, I think at the time of budgeting, the funds were not available. I don't think we should assume free cash means the funds are available. I don't think free cash, like, kind of similar subtle point Greg was bringing up, that's an operational I would cost have, I would have argued against the increases out of free cash as well, just, just because it's... So, we're and I know it's so small, small it really is well, I mean, if you a guys, practical point. If you guys would want to pay, uh, if whatever way you want to go, we have money within the levy limit. We can tax. We can tax everybody right up to the levy limit. We don't have to be so right. frugal. If you guys want to do that right now, everybody can get their pens, and we can start doing the budget. No, and we can put back in everything that was taken out, and we can go to the tax levy limit right now. I have worked on this budget with Ted okay. minimally, um, and you guys are more than welcome to take a stab at it. Absolutely, but we budgeted to try to maintain a stable tax limit mm -hmm. or tax level. You don't have to stay within that level if you so choose not to. That's right. Why well, the but voters don't have to? The voters don't have to, but you don't have to propose a budget to stay under the right. stay as far under the levy limit as we did. <laughs> but I, I guess um, I'll try not to sound too much of it. An employee here but you do have some employees that have reached their maximum in the classification system mm -hmm. that will not see another increase step this increase. year I happen to think it's what's fair to our employees and you know perhaps if we were off somewhere in Washington DC you might have a different feeling but most of these people aren't making that much money and we haven't really cut the employees, yes. We haven't added to certain things. Certain things have been put off, agreed. I don't really argue that that didn't happen, but I think it's fair that they, when we're in a position, we've asked them in the past, and it happened when I was on the board, and it, it'll happen again. Uh, you know, we're asking to bite the bullet when it's time and then uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, I, I just feel it's, it's what's fair and um, I think. We're not talking like school, like a lot of teachers I think make $60,000, yeah, well $70,000 and they, yeah, pro well and that they probably got their 2% increase this year. What? We're probably talking people that are making twenty or $30,000. Whatever, yeah. Um, but I, I just happen to think this is fair. I don't favor going running up the levy limits and so on. Uh, you can argue whether the free cash does this if you, if you put it towards something else and it brings that down and then this goes back up. I mean, you know, where's it? Where's the free cash going? I don't know. You know, you could say it's going one way or the other. It's being used. Generally, it shouldn't be used for operational costs. Uh, it should be used for capital investment. Well, I don't know about that. That's let me, my Let opinion. me argue with it how I have seen free cash over the years. One reason, there's a number of reasons why we have a free cash balance of this magnitude. And one reason, to be very honest, is that the board spent very, very little money in the past year other than what was contractually obligated to straighten things out you know, moving money around and stuff. We haven't done that. You, I, this is where I get very, very conservative because I say to the department, you come in, you say this is what you want and this is what you need to operate. You better darn well make it through the year because if you don't, you're going to have some hard questions coming back. And we have done that. And one reason we have the free cash is because we go to the department, at least this is my philosophy. Our, what we present tomorrow night 
I mean, it may sound corny, but to me, that is a contract between the town and its citizenry. And that contract, like any other contract, it is sacrosanct. I think we all know certain things come up, and it, you know, we can't predict you know, if there's going to be some fire or something that cost a hundred grand to put out or something, we can't do that. But, you know, we have said that, and that's one reason we have the free cash that we do, because, you know, I, I feel very strongly about this, and when we don't have enough money, I will go and ask the department heads, why don't we have enough money in there? If you didn't, if you needed more, you should have come back in January and asked for it when you were putting the budgets together, and then we could have dealt with it, and if we'd taken it out and you needed it, well, then it's our fault. But um, the one reason we have this is because there have been some pretty hard lines taken throughout the year. That's why you get the free cash. You don't spend it here if you're able to send it there, and so on and so on, but it, it, it's adherence to a budget process. and. I, this is the way I have viewed it, and I know you're looking it up, right? But uh, I've got to look up the difference in the. If I, but, I, I was got to look up the difference in the in the. Yeah. Well, anyway. Actual budget. But I'm just telling you, this is the way I look at it, and if we're going to address the issue, this is the time to do it. And yes, there's free cash being moved around, but that free cash comes because there've been some pretty hard lines taken on budgetary issues during the year. That's one source of the free cash amongst other things. There's other, you know, but I think uh, this is a hard line the board took. And granted, maybe some will say it's because there was only one of us here for two months. That certainly probably helped the line. <laughs> Didn't hurt it any no. <laughs> humorous note, but I think this is the way I look at it. And I don't want to go back in October or some other time of the year and start fooling around with the salaries in the middle of the year because that breaks that bond and I feel very strongly about that and I understand if you have a fire you know the year we had the hotel and stuff it cost a quarter of a million bucks or some crazy amount between this that and the other thing that happens and most reasonable people are going to say well you got to put the fire out but on a normal situation we say to our departments you're coming in for this, and this is what you need to operate. Now, we put equipment purchases and stuff off, but that's a little different. But to actually run the departments, this is why we have the free cash that we do. And well, we canceled a couple softwares for $10,000 each. Yeah. One of them, the other one apparently got confusion which one got purchased. But if you think of those are hard decisions at the time, but this is sometimes these are the reasons you're in the position you're in. Right. I hear you, but here's here's the thing, just another yep. viewpoint of this. Yeah, I'm, nobody's, again, really, I'm not, nobody's really wrong or right here. Right, but this year we got 658000 When was the last time we got over, say, 450000 It's happened quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Recently, when was the last time we got we more than four hundred and fifty thousand in free cash? What did we have last year? It's free, uh, I think it's three hundred something. something. Yeah, three something. I think it's been some years since we've been at six hundred. I think this is a little bit of an anomaly. Actually, a large anomaly based on what our average would be. Based on the information I got from people I've asked, because mm -hmm. I haven't been here as long and me, I haven't seen as many. Let me budgets. throw this at you real quick. What, we, what we've said right along, um, especially with the monies for the the software and the different things that we took off the warrant, um, we said we will and we revisit them and hopefully give them those things in the fall. And it looks like we can. Um, those would be capital purchases for software and those upgrades. And if we do intend to follow through and grant those, why wouldn't we grant this? I believe that's my intent for the fall, now that the, we know the money will be available and we'll be able to take it out of stabilization Plus, hopefully and, we'll and have give next, them those this things. This year's free cash. Uh, certified as well and right. be available. So if, if we truly intend to go back and revisit those items and, and put a bulk of those you know, back on and, and award them in the fall, then, then we've loosened the belt. We're going when we intend to, I believe. Since now that we know what's coming in, we didn't know we had we we didn't know this was coming in. Are you kidding me? We were hoping for a hundred and a half. This is huge. Um, and at a hundred and a half, two hundred, we're saying maybe we can revisit revisit some of the fall. We're revisiting in the fall. 
we're still going to bolster stabilization huge. Um, then if we're going to go back and try to take care of some of these software issues and other things the department's asked for, I don't think that taking care of non-union workers, um, and I know maybe that's just making you a, a tighter pinch with the union workers, and it's going to change that. Um, but without the workers of this town that are paid by this town, especially on the lower end of these scales, the laborers, um, we don't have a functioning town. And if, if, if we overlook them when we really can do it, I, I think that's going to create bad feelings with, frankly, I don't give a hoot about, you know, when I, when I get up at 2 a.m. and go to a fire call for an hour and a half, the 15 bucks is nothing. I'm losing three hours of my sleep at night to go to a car crash. I'm not doing it for 15 bucks for the one hour of pay to lose three hours of sleep. So I don't, I don't care how it affects me, and none of the final will care how it affects them. But I, I think the people who come here and work 40 hours a week for us, I, I do think it's a, it's a show of appreciation for what they do. Since we do know it's there, and we intend to go forward. Um, Here's, I will, I got one more thing to say, and, and then I'll just leave it at that. that that's one of the reasons we were sitting here waiting for free cash, other than just the time it took to get to it, and the reason we were cutting everything in the warrant was because this is a number you can never count on. Right. You don't know what that value will be until it's done. That's we right. asked and we could barely get an estimate over 200000 at the time when she was trying to get there. Second, when the capital planning committee is looking at next year's capital plan, hopefully months in advance from what we started this time. If we don't mess with this much and we really build up that stabilization line, we can get into that then we can actually determine a percentage of that and say that's yours to plan for that year. Mm -hmm. Some of it will be debt, some of it will be stabilization. And you can set it aside and they know they got it starting in September. But if we start throwing 30000 out now, and we say we're going to throw out another 200000 out in capital expenses in October or whenever for a special town meeting, we're defeating our ability to actually plan rather than saying take a step back for one year. For one year, take a step back mm -hmm. to allow yourself to build something up to work right. off of rather than chasing your tail. And that's all I'm recommending. I understand that, but if, I think if, um, if the people that work for this town 40 hours a week um, can't expect some small increase in pay whereas, because they don't have a union, um, that, that we need to raise in, the, the levy limit and in, in pay our workers. If, I understand. If that's what it comes down to. If, it, if we're concerned that we can't fund this next year, like we give this increase, it's going to be too much next year, then we raise the levy. And I am in and, no and, way and, and I have, opposed I have to giving our levy. workers better it, pay. This right. is if, not if, about that. If, if mm -hmm. I understand I, I the think concern. they deserve better pay, and I think if that means we need to pay more. I mean, Prop 2.5 came around because the schools were getting out of control. They're out of control again. They're, they're back to an absorbent amount of our budget. The idea was when you, when, you, when you set this levy limit, you set the tax limit, the schools were going crazy. This is what it all came about from. And it's happening again despite the limit, and they're getting a larger portion of the budget. And I, I once again think in the future we need to hopefully work with the school and see if they can find a way to, to reel that in a little bit because we are millions above mm -hmm. what the state says our, our minimum contribution should be. Um, and if, if, if that's the way the town wants to keep to spend the money, that's fine. But if we keep spending that money that way, we, we can't expect people to work um, you know, without reasonable increases. And, and I experienced the other end of this, I worked for the military. We had a pay freeze for years, and I got sick of it and left. I went and found other work instead of working for myself. I wouldn't stay under those conditions. And turnover is a real possibility. This is, you know, we, if, if it becomes an um, issue, if it becomes an issue next year, if we, if we say we'll give them the, the increase this year and it becomes an issue next year's budget, then, then I will once again propose up in the You're not going to cut them 2% next year. No, no but if I'll you propose don't have up in the so, so all I'm saying if, is everything you give them now is if, there. If, 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 we shouldn't have to, but Another if you, thing, but, sorry. Go yeah, that's okay. okay. Another thing that I just bring to your attention that you probably don't realize, every year that we've gotten 2% as employees, our health insurance that we pay into goes up 4%. 
So you're running backwards yeah. all the time. So uh, just just so you know. Well, I'm sure, yeah. For the people that do buy into the health insurance. Right. Their, their yeah, paycheck right. goes down every year, not Yeah, that's what I think. The bottom yeah, line, then the well, goes down. In our own personal lives, we're at that bottom. Yeah, absolutely. Probably everybody watching and tell me I can relate to that. <laughs> no, I, I recognize. Again, this is me just trying to really look at Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard. Right. It, I'm looking just at black and white numbers because I'm trying to really pay attention to just my thought process here was I thought this is a good year for correction. We needed to take a look, correct, rebuild our, our base before we move forward. And sometimes you get a nice check that you didn't expect and you want to go blow it on a new TV when what well, you really should do is put I, it in the bank and wait a year for the next TV model or wait a year so that it goes from... Let's, let's say it differently. So that's all I'm suggesting is... Let's say we had $30,000 to spare in the budget. Would you, would you send out three $10,000 software packets or give these people a raise? If you only had thirty one in the budget, where would it go first? To the software or to a raise? To the software. And it's not because I don't appreciate them. It's because their life would be easier doing their job. Some, some of them, not all of them. There's, it's, it, it, this impacts way more people than just the software is going to affect. This impacts... How much does it impact them? Do the math. How, well, we said $30,000. 800 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that doesn't help them. It helps them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not belittling that. But we're not talking about giving each person $1,000 extra a year or uh, $1,200 it does help, but when you break it out over 12 months, mm -hmm. twice a month, and then you take taxes out of it, what are they feeling? 20 bucks a week? It's a paid vacation for somebody. 20 bucks a week? If you put what I'm saying is the effect, you're talking about the effect on everybody. Right. The software would have a greater effect on this town by buying it now because next year they might not ask for the assistant because their personnel they have can accomplish the work in a more efficient manner. And now you have more money to give everybody a bigger raise. But if we keep cutting out the efficiency effort of getting softwares and programs that make it easier for them to do their job, we undercut their ability and this is why to gonna, get a raise. This is why we're going to approach those in the fall. But, you know... That's fine. It's just a, a, a perspective. Mm -hmm. If you want to put a motion on the table, I'll move forward with it, Charlie. I won't balk it. I just wanted a good discussion about it. Yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate, believe me, you know what I said about free cash, I appreciate this, but I do feel, you know, this is a, because... I mean, I think they deserve it. Cash. If we could afford it, I'd give everybody well, like a $3 an hour raise and say, there you go, because you deserve it. I don't have it. Because so of that's my fear. large free cash number, I, I think it is a, a wise thing to do for morale, for every other reason. Like, it's, like I said, it's 20 bucks a week. You put that aside for 50 weeks, it's $1,000. There's someone's plane ticket in there. You know what I mean? And, you, and it's, you're right. It's, 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 it's theirs it's, to it's, invest in use, and it does. It's very substantial to someone that's making twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. It's very substantial. Yeah, it is. Um, and I, I think we can certainly be, I don't want to blow the 600 grand, don't get me wrong, but 30,000 here, and if we put 100, 100 yeah. and something in the fall out of stabilization to buy some of these important software issues, I'm okay with that too. Stabilization is still gonna go up by three, four hundred thousand dollars. We're gonna get back near a million or over a million. That's good. And we have more money coming when the next free cash gets freed up. This is 2016 free cash, right? Mm -hmm. 2017 free cash is coming. There's another one coming before the year's out. Yeah, but you know as well as I, this town has some major upgrades we've been ignoring. And, and, and we're going to put, hopefully... Not, not because we wanted to, it's because we couldn't we, afford it. And, and if we get 200000 more in stabilization for the next free cash next year, that's fantastic. Um, we, we've got to be diligent on this, on this budget next year. We're going to be on it sooner. We've already talked about that. And we're going to look at everything we can. And we're going to keep a tight hold of this. I don't want to give up the, the, the progress we made on it. Um, but I, I, I feel very strongly about, you know, I, my parents and teachers always said we need to pay teachers and whatnot. The teachers, teachers make a good income for 180 days of work a year. 
Um, I think they do very well now. And we're not talking about people that are doing very well. We're talking about people that work 52 weeks a year. Um, so do you want to put a motion on the table, Charlie? I would entertain one. He's recused uh, himself from gonna, the process. Gonna, I got to stay to my word. I can make so. Oh, I see what uh, you're saying. That I'm, way I'm, I can set I'm, I'm, I'm not going to vote myself a pay raise, although, like I said, I could give two, two hoots about getting another couple pennies in my fire check. I'm not in it for the money. It's not my job. Yeah. It's not my career. It's it's not a significant amount I of money to me. About that. I did. Quite but I, I just want to be heard on why I think it goes okay. that way and make sure you guys. I will make a motion that we authorize. The two percent increase for all non-union employees. I would second that motion. Okay, I, I respect that. And uh, you want to add any? Uh, no. I, I, okay, I will c call for a vote. In favor? Uh, okay, I'm in favor. Matt, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Oh, it's. I, I, no, I appreciate the debate. I want to have the debate. I like too. the debate. We all like the debate. That's why we're here till 10 o'clock every night. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> uh, Faye, let me ask you a question. You know, did you, did you run through the items other than the veterans ones? Because that sheet was really, when I opened it yesterday, they said, wait a minute, Ron's signature page. I saw some numbers this morning. Did you, yeah. You, you went through Do it. Do a double check on it again. Okay. I, uh, you Gene know. and I are going to go through all this and uh, finish up the motions tomorrow with the, where the monies are coming from tomorrow. Um, morning, okay. Because these all have to go to print tomorrow during the day. Like I saw, the gas account still had a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I changed it. that. Okay, that, have, that's actually, that's why I, I said this is. I I just made a few. I was you know I only had two hours this morning. I put myself at work a couple hours off to do uh, this, but I gave you one. I did go through it. And, yeah, because um, you wrote on yours, right? Yeah, you don't want your regular work to interfere oh, with this job. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't yes, do that. I did. Okay. I took the kids off this morning because I held them yeah, up. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Let's right, race through this. A couple errors already on that. I've only done the only set of eyes looking through this I know. so that's, far. That's why I get back to you when I can. Yep. I'm just so uh, if you could do a once over on this again. Okay. If you find any corrections or whatever. I'll look at it at 6 a.m. Okay. okay. So I get 6 to 7. I can do it. If, with the hard copy, it's easier than on the computer, yep. though. It's, it's, Okay. As nice as that screen is, it's a lot easier to see it this way, so I can go through it. Sure. Well, okay. I'll go again tomorrow morning, and I'll let you know if I see anything for sure. Sure. Okay. I guess we can make the note now of number 16 change to 25000 OPEP. Yep. And that one's again, that's a savings to savings. Yeah, we're not going to change that right now. That won't be changed in the book. On right? the floor. That'll It'll be on be the floor. changed on the floor. We can't change this, but we can, we, can, we can make a motion to amend the number on the floor before we vote on it. Mm -hmm. Why can't we change that? We didn't put a dollar value on the warrant. No, but uh, it's here. So you, you can, can just present the number ahead of time rather than, I was confused. We presented the public hearing with that number. Yeah. One Wednesday. This is, I think, a lot. All right. Well, never mind. This change is a lot. change as little as we can until the floor. But, but Let we the can voters decide. And if they haven't the, seen the number and they don't want to make a pinpoint on that, so be it. But this is the much more visible and upfront way to do it, I yeah. think. Um, Good enough. I don't know gotcha. if there's any update on the regional building inspector. Okay. The uh, position was uh, reviewed by the town council, Jim Baird. It's gone to the town of Petersham for uh, a couple minute page to review. That's so where it is currently. Okay. This one. Okay. But Jim Beard was okay with it? Yeah, he made suggestions and changes which we incorporated. Okay. Good. Okay. Do we need a vote on Michael? Tell me. Uh, first, I have a couple wage authorizations. Okay. Sorry. Uh, the first one is from the library department. Yeah, uh, right. So okay. the library recently hired an employee, and Stephanie didn't work out. So um, she's moving on to the candidate number two. So um, that's the wage authorization for this person to fill that position. Is that state minimum? Nope. What? We don't have to pay state minimum wage. We're only required to pay federal minimum wage, which is still seven dollars and something cents. Really? We're yeah. exempt from state minimum wage rights. We are. Wow, that's horrible. <laughs> How does that work? Is it is it kind of like the uh, state senate saying everybody else does this, but we're exempt? 
it kind of sure they like for it. some reason accidentally included municipalities in one of these rare exemptions. We don't have anybody that makes state minimum wage. I mean federal minimum wage. No, well, that's good. That would be horrible. So this is for uh, I didn't get the name on that. Elizabeth Garrett. What was it? I make a motion to accept. I'm sorry. At 10.77 per hour, minimum step CL-1. I would make a motion to accept the appointment of Elizabeth Garrett as a library assistant. Second the motion. Okay. Discussion. Hearing none. Call for a vote. Okay. Aye. Right. Okay. Aye. Right. Uh, the next one. The cemetery hasn't signed that yet. They meet Thursday. They've already chosen this employee. This is uh, this person's passed all the pre-employment requirements, uh, so they're looking for that. I figured we'd sneak that in tonight since we don't meet again for, I'm not The sure order of signature is not relevant, is it on that? Does it fall under the classification? Oh. No, I mean, we don't yeah. have to wait for them to sign okay. it. We can, we can improve it and they yeah, can, can, they can continue and yeah. they continue. Yep, and they can take this form to their meeting and sign off on it and get it back to so me. Or, or not if they want, right? No, they will. They chose this employee. Yeah. Okay. And they, they yeah, submitted well, I don't this want to, do this to us, but they haven't had to sign it yet. Okay. Do we have the wage on that as well? Mm -hmm. So, make a motion to accept Owen Benoit mm -hmm. as a cemetery laborer, um, contention on cemetery commission's official signature and acceptance. What's the rate? At eleven dollars an hour. 40 hours a week, seasonal. Do I have a second? I second that motion. Okay, discussion. It's interesting to note they've already started, so I guess- He it's, has not. He has not, it, no. did, it indicated today date on it. Uh, I don't know if he started today. Oh, yeah, it did he start. He may have started today. is today, the start yeah. date, you're right. <laughs> I'm going to just- Is that who I saw driving down the hill? <laughs> I'm not sure. When I came up this morning, coming down- I don't know. Summer Street. <laughs> we motion, we didn't vote. Okay. Give us a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll keep you on edge. <laughs> uh, yeah, did, that's right. We did receive a resignation. I haven't watched any papers yet tonight. Uh, last week, a resignation from uh, Water Department. Michael Stelmack uh, resigned, effective um, Mar uh, May 14th. I guess this was submitted, and it was effective June 9th. Okay. Make a motion to accept the resignation of Michael Stelmack. Second motion. Okay. Yeah. Discussion in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion in. Um, We're going to make it out here before 10 30. Oh, we better be. <laughs> Okay, anything uh, else? We've got to set the meeting schedule. Uh, well, Greg, do you want to talk about that special um, municipal yeah. special employee? What, do, do we okay. have the, the designation? Are, are, are the firefighters considered special town employees? I don't, I did, have not honestly had I, a chance to be that. Tom, George, I do not Tom they are. George has said we were, um, but that was. that was. Um, Does he know when that would have been voted? Because the selectmen would have voted it. He was very confident that that was the case, um, but I didn't ask as, as to when it was voted, but that, that was a concern. Um, we could hmm. follow the, up the town clerk. Is that correct, or what, is it a meeting unit under us? And what's going on is we have um, one of the firefighters runs an EMT school. He has for almost a decade now. He does classes out at, um, actually I think Amherst College brings him out, and now Holyoke College. And he runs courses. He's been. He was originally out of Ocam Fire Station, and he did some out of Phillipson Fire Station. He runs EMT courses, and um, I don't remember the exact scenario. He was set up to run a course someplace, and they decided not to do it. But they had so many students that needed to get into a class, so he'd ask the fire chief if he can do it here in Barry, and they just contingent upon him getting signed off from the ethics on it because he's a firefighter and then he'd be doing the contract work for the town. And Ethics had asked something about the designation. If he's designated a special employee, then it, that was okay. I think that means as a firefighter, not as his contract okay. work. Um, and once again, 
He's worked in OCAM where he was an EMT. He's worked in Philliston where he was not on their payroll. Um, and in OCAM, ethics had said it was fine. He just said, um, for example, during a class they had a call and he went in the call, he couldn't be paid for that. So he just recused his paycheck for the entire duration of when his class ran in that case to s safeguard from it. They may actually um, investigate that and say, oh yeah, if that's what worked in OCAM, that's what we're going to do here. So in the meantime, he was, had asked me if I could check into it to see what we have for designation. And if they are not special town employees, if we, if firefighters are not, what would it take for us to change that designation? So this is going to benefit. I think he was given chief maybe four free slots in the class. Um, so when I was reading up on it. A box of students. So that's a, that's a good freebie to let him use the, the station. Uh, uh, online, the summary for this particular conflict of interest section. Mm -hmm. Special employee appeared to state that... Uh, you cannot make an individual a special employee. No, you can make a position. Make, we'd have to make so all part-time fire em, employees, right. firefighters, would be would then to considered be a special employees. It would have to be the paintbrush in this one to redesignate um, everyone. If we had to redesignate, it may already be the designation. And what repercussions are there if we make a change? If we had to, I don't know how. I don't make know the a change. If if we weren't designated special town employees, and special we, municipal when they're employees, they're special municipal employees, yeah, and that's what Tom said we were right. special municipal employees. If if that, I mean, I don't know what the definition is. Uh, I can only remember us designating um, in my time one person, um, and it was at a public meeting, so it doesn't matter. But Dave uh, Richard from White Valley Auto, mm -hmm. the Slickman designated him as a special municipal employee because he's a commissioner. So he would get a check as a commissioner in the cemetery, but his business also re could receive payment from the town for towing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so he came to the board and asked to be appointed as a special municipal employee. And that technically would make all members of the cemetery commission special employees. The designation was only for him. It cannot be, is what I understood by the law. I don't know, Matt. I'm just telling you, and I think it came from the ethics, what he brought us, so we could look that up from him. Right, because the same thing, like, they can't, just by state law naturally, Charlie, you and I are considered special municipal employees as members of the select board. Any member of a select board in the state of Massachusetts is automatically a special municipal employee in that role. So, you know, that's what I was wondering. Since the firefighters, we're not in um, the health care system. We're not in, you know, we don't, mm. we, when offered no benefits, no vacation, no sick, um, no insurance, there's, there's no offers made to us outside of it's whatever a select they board's decision. Hour. So I'm wondering if that already is that designation because this, this, this it's ask, not a typical employee employee. Yeah, why don't we ask for. Fred when he comes by? Mm -hmm. I think would be a... You've got to be a town less than, I think, 3,000. And then all employees are special municipal. Public and state. Right. When you get above 3,000, it's designated 3, by the select board. The they said, right. According to the summary so I was reading. Working on that. But what I'm saying, what is it, what, how does it No, he's asking what's the method. Yeah. If they're yeah, not, well, it's yeah. our decision. I, I was just making right. Oh, OK. I didn't know if you heard that. I said we're working on the 35. But I'm saying, but, oh, but to <laughs> our, <laughs> but what does it change for the relationship with the town if they're special town employee versus? Well, I just looked it up, and it's the first thing it says is, um, your position is eligible to be designated as a special municipal employee provi position provided that you are not paid. So firefighters are paid. Or you work less than 800 hours in the last 365 days. Right. Or what? You work less than 800 hours in the last 365 days. It says, or also, that's, that's safe. <laughs> also you hold a part-time position which allows you to work at another job during normal working hours. Which, which is the case. Right. So there's... Public safety comes under a whole different set of guidelines. Right. So if firefighters, if, so if call firefighters are. What are you looking at? 30 or do we have to designate individually? Because if, if, if Chief yeah, Rogalski starts with shifts, it oh. does per diem shifts, that would individually pull people out of that definition. So. Maybe, no, it it, maybe it doesn't have to be a... It, it, that comes back to the 800 hours worked or less. 
Right, but if you know, I suggest okay, so we I ask, think, ask our labor council. Yeah, yeah I think and also he reached person. out to ethics, correct? He's reached out to ethics. So I would wait and see what they say because at the end of the day, if we're doing it wrong, they're the ones that are going to come and tell us that we're wrong. Right. They so. may give him approval as he is, or they, or he may actually have to be a special town employee to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. So, if if he's not, he, he obviously he can't come and make a request for this. But if he's not. Either I'd have to see if someone else would come in, or I can make the request that we that we change the designation. I think it benefits. Um, obviously, got to benefit him from the class. He'll make some money in his class, but you know, he could always do it in a different town and, and probably just pull the same six employees and go back to Oakham mm -hmm. or somewhere else. Um, but if he comes here, what's in it for Barry is is like four oh. seats in his class. Yeah. That's what he used to do with Oakham. I remember the chief said, "Sure, you can do it here, but give me X number of students per class." And he got a lot of his guys certified that way. Um, and his success rate in his class, he's got, he may still have a 100% passing rate. He's, he's was an exception. The state even came out and looked at him because so many people had to say. And they just really like his teaching methods. And he's, you know, that mm -hmm. successful. It's, a, it's, it's, it would be a benefit to us, for sure. I'd never do it. I've got no interest in it. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm, okay. God do bless them. They, they take all that time. But Have any discussion on the town administrative position? No. Um, we were able to coordinate Matt and Andrew with town council, uh, I'm sorry, labor council for Thursday morning at 9. Excellent. So do that and then around, we'll finish that up in an hour and then I'll go to the police union at 9, I mean at 10. So. Um, and then it's good you're not letting your real work in interfere. No, I'm just yeah. taking personal time and paid time off. <laughs> I don't get that. I just... Don't uh, go to whatever, work. It's, it's just, just yeah, you got to build it into this this fund that you can then pay yourself back with when you take yeah, a day right. off. You'll call yeah, it your it's, holiday it's, fund. It's like when the better half wants to go on vacation. I'm like, oh, sure, know. sure. I just won't get paid for a week. And we had the cops. They don't understand but it's, that. It's, you got to do it. You got to. Cops do it. don't understand that when we had the farm. No, no. They, 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 off, yeah, they don't. They need to get milk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that's and always the hardest part of being for a farmer too. was oh, God, yeah. how do you get away for a weekend or a week? Um, the next thing we Neighbors. have is the summer schedule. So your next regular meeting falls on the Fourth of July holiday. Um, I don't know how I you might guys be late, feel. guys. I make a motion to skip that meeting. Well, Second. Yeah. Uh, oh. the whole, you oh. just set the whole schedule before you do that. Okay. So in the past, um, the select boards have narrowed their meetings down to one meeting a month for the months of like uh, July, August, September, and then they usually go back mm. in the regular session. Um, we could have things pop up that will with not our IT allow stuff that. coming. We can't do that. We just got him for thirty days. We've got to stay on the IT, so we're going to have to meet maybe on an off day. We've got to stay with that IT issue and, and talk to Rutland about. That work. sounds great, but I don't think it's going to work. I think right now I would still make the motion to skip July 3rd. Yeah, we can schedule as needed. but And then we... the rest would just be according to schedule, mm -hmm. except I will not be here for the first week of August because that is my vacation. Okay. What I had thought was maybe uh, at least I need a pretty good rest here. Uh, <laughs> I had thought maybe we could meet next Monday evening, and then we'd skip that week. We'd have a DPW week. It would put us into the third week of July. So you're looking and at it would allow us any following. Having a regular meeting the 26th? Yeah. Okay. Well, we haven't decided. Yeah. And then go what, to August? Then we can decide from there. And if we have to have a meeting, I mean, I got a feeling there's somewhere. How about we look at July 17th after that? July what? 17th. Well, like you said, we can we can figure that out if we meet in the twenty sixth. We can ha hash that out then. Well, do you want to meet the? Well, the tenth is DPW commission. That's the seventeenth, right, would be our normal follow-up selection meeting. Mm -hmm. But the so the, the question is, does come up do closing the out the town administrator contract. We're gonna have to meet and at least get that on the agenda to approve the contract. Well, depending on what happens Thursday, Charlie's proposing having a meeting Monday. Right, if that goes well, then Monday we close that if we're lucky. But then we've got to work with that town administrator immediately to get an IT director <coughs> something moving. So if we need to post a position, we're posting a position sooner than later rather than waiting two weeks. That's all I meant. 
So I don't know we're, if that's going to squeeze gonna in get, another. That's all. We're going to get that guideline from Adam, right? In, in mm -hmm. if he gets that to us this week, this week, that's we could use that guideline and, and, and hand it in when we meet with um, our new administrator. Hand it over to him. Okay, I say you guys go forward with the 26th right now, and how about on the 26th we okay. evaluate what you want for the rest of the summer? I want it all out. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm being honest. Um, sounds good. Okay, so... Actually, that first week of August isn't a meeting anyway. No. Because it starts on the Tuesday. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So. Do you want to... Um, I don't, we don't need a motion. We no, can just, just state that the next day, meeting yeah. will be, next, next regular meeting 26. will be the 26th. Same bat time. And just update my town government. Yep. I think it auto populates that July 3rd mm -hmm. and just cancel mm -hmm. it or whatever if you don't mind. Thank you. I know what. Right. Hey, let's throw more at you. But if, please. I'm pretty you. used to it by now. Anything else? No, no. Is July 3rd still in question? Or is no, that it's no, out. that's out. No, no July 3rd. No. Right you may be at your last meeting. Well, at least one more. <laughs> so, what's your preference? What would you like to do, Phil? Stick out another meeting or start your summer? And I don't mean that in a negative way let's whatsoever. See when, let's see when the new person starts. I mean, I was thinking okay. that they have to give, let's suppose that the contract negotiations go well on the Thursday. And he gives two weeks notice, three weeks notice. I don't know whether he's going to want a break. He might take off a week before he starts here beyond right. I got you. Day from where he he may turn in his two weeks and have two weeks vacation left. But too. I, I'd like to move on as soon as I can. Uh, okay. Why don't we see what how things go on, on Thursday? I'll try to at least see if I can get a timeline from him regarding his notice intent and stuff like that to Thursday. Yeah, I'll be there too. Okay. Go. So we're all set. You tell me. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay, David. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.